What's going on, guys? It's your boy, the Bad Wolf. Yes, I'm running a little bit late. I decided to uh, talk to one or two people. Um, so we're going to have Sherry on, and we should have Fearless Floyd. He's going to be my co-host tonight. Um, woo! Woo! It is your boy, the Bad Wolf, sometimes dressed in white, sometimes in black. Let's get at it. All right. So, like I said, you guys have no idea how long I've been waiting to meet Sherry. Literally, when I started this, she was one of the first people that I actually put credibility into. I was uh, supporting, rooting for, and um, I was just amazed at her courage uh, to leave the establishment of the IRS on a challenge and come forth and bring this information to the people. All right. So I am amazed. I am wowed. I have been wanting to meet her for so long. I didn't think it was going to ever happen. Um, and I, hey, I just took a swing. I was like, hey, I've always been a big fan. Would you like to do the show? She was like, yeah, let's go. I was like, whew, all right. So, all right. Sherry will be on at about 8 o'clock, um, as long as everything is good. Um, my co-host, Fearless Floyd, will be on sometime between now and then. We've got 139 people already in within a couple of minutes. It's going to be a fire show tonight, guys. Um, so with that being said, let's let's do our traditional thanking of the people who are here supporting the Wolf and the, all of the Nationals, because we are all a family for those who care to eat with us, because if I eat, we all eat. When y'all eat, y'all break me a piece off and I eat with you. All right, so we got Fred in the house. We got Business, Empress, Corrupted. What's going on, Corrupt? Capricorn, DD. Yes, I'm recognizing some names here. Uh, King, Sadie Ann, uh, Penzi, Pen Moy. Uh, Kenneth, Joel, Inventor, what's going on? Rick Smith, all right, I'm starting to recognize a lot of names now. Shadow Smurf, okay, yep, yep. Let's see, um, Jerry in Baltimore, uh, does Black Side 32 explain starting micronation? Um, I made a video on that. And anybody can do it on their own. I do sell a template for rather cheap on how to do it and get it started and do your own thing. Um, and then I also issue a, um, a declaration of peace and treaty between our nations uh, as well. Darby, I am Adriana. What's going on? Peace to everybody. Peace to the young gods out here. Uh, Richard Madison, 7SML, Mary. Jonathan, Jeff, Antichrist, Freedom 74, Sis, R. Jones, Tanya, 100th Monkey, JC. Wow, you got, I can't, I don't know if I can keep up even with all the names. Hines, I'm gonna try to go faster. Hines, Jeff, Dr. Swindle, Tanya, My Culture Rules, Chucky, Robert, Gaines, My Culture, I've got that one, uh, Kim, uh, King. Tony, AJ, DJ, D Brown, it's a trust. Soshi, Carl, Carl Trombley, what's going on? Tony D, Ray Shaw, Dr. Claim, Anthony, Chrissy, Pete, Noble, uh, Natalie, James, Fresh, Ken44, Curtis, Diane, Gwendolyn, Chip, Lynn, Samuel. Randy, Cheryl, Sherry, Nixon, uh, McDowell, Beverly, Alfonso, Juggernaut, Music Dungeon, James Simpson, and Indigo Skies. Oh, and Carrie Smith with the first $2 appreciation. Oh, and Rose and Blue Bum and Free G. All right, all right, all right. And R. Jones, can anybody point me for help and secure in Canada? Um, in Canada, go to um, a Warriors call on YouTube. A Warriors call. Um, he is the Bad Wolf equivalent up there in Canada, holding it down. Um, we got uh, what Sadie, 
Scorpion, Xena, Willful, Raymond, Xena, Mel. What's going on, guys? And good music. Everybody loves good music. All right, all right, all right. So one of the things I want to let you guys know that just came to my attention, because um, like I said, we keep it real here. So we did find out um, after examination and cross-examination, what's going on, Tony, in a conceptual, um, that the W... 4T file is not a real file, okay, for canceling uh, your W-4. The W-4T file is not a real IRS form. What it is is somebody created that form to cancel theirs and made it look like the IRS form, but doesn't have an, I, an OMB number on there. Um, and after extensive research uh, through the IRS, it's not a real form. Now, can you use it? You can always tell them that you want to cancel the form, but that is not a real form. So your other forms would be your W-4V, your W-8BEN, your W-8BEN-E, your uh, 8233, your 1040NR. Those are all real. So, yep. Um, boom. Buster. Yeah. So Fam Guardian, we believe um no offense if we're wrong but that's the only place we've been able to find it other than people handing it out and either they made it or somebody else made it but they do hold that one but it is not a real file okay it is not a recognized irs file so do not use that one unless you choose to read it thoroughly and let the employer know that it is actually your file that was created but not by you or a created file all right so for those people who don't know, Sherry Peel Jackson is a former IRS agent, all right? And um, <laughs> it takes one to know one, King, so right back at you. Appreciate you for that. Um, okay, so let's get, supposed to be talking about taxes and people got, what do we got here? It's a trust. Should have known it was your, your bad butt doing something. What do we got here? Yes. Um, okay. So you can apply for the Certificate of Non-Citizen Nationality. It is free um, to do that. You can create your own form. They do not have a standard form. Um, I am working on my own version of that. It'll probably be free on Black Site once I get done with it. Um, because I'm not going to charge you for a form that you can really make your own. It's pretty simple. Um, I basically took apart my explanatory statement and uh, converted that. Okay. Um, to answer this one, the 1040X converts the U.S. bad debts to you into tax credits. I have heard that the 1040X is used to change, amend, and other alterations to previously filed things. Uh, yes. So, yep. Indigo Skies. Yep. Nope. That W4T file is not authentic. Okay. It's not authentic. Um, yes. Uh, Fam Guardian does make their own files. And to be honest, there's actually nothing wrong with making your own files. And as, as long as you don't claim them to be something that they're not. And if you pay close attention to that file, it does not say that it's from the IRS and it does not have an OMB number, an officially recognized number for being a governmental file. Okay. But because we, in fact, are the uh, beneficiaries and the creators or grantors, if you will, of the trust, um, we can make our own files. Any file that they produce, we can reproduce as long as we do not copy their stuff word for word and try to pass it off as being theirs, okay? All right, Tony says, smash that like button, gang. We got 247 people. So um, let's make sure we got those likes going on so that uh, we can stave off the, uh, the trolls. I definitely appreciate that in advance. Um, Paul, yes, 
when you make your own micronation or if you create your own foreign trust, not um, not to be uh, not to be held in the United States trust, but truly your own private and foreign trust, not domiciled in the U.S. corporation. Yes, you can do that. And because we are, in fact, the people who can change the Constitution. OK, we can create our own files in this country. Now, they may not like that because they all want the official ones, but there's no law against it. We are the creators and we can do that. As long as we do not do copyright infringement. Uh, Dr. Swindle, U.S. Court of Appeals and 11th affirmed the four year sentence of tax definitely crime against Henry Peel, a former house. Yes, that is true. They did go after her when she was still learning the process on uh, what it is to not pay taxes. See, from my understanding, okay, my, my, my belief is that within the jurisdiction of the United States, if you are considered a 14th Amendment U.S. citizen, you are a taxpayer. That corp, that state-created corporation is taxable. No matter where you go in the world, it is taxable. Unless you either change the status of it or you operate with a tax-exempt entity or you operate in the private as an unincorporated association. But if it is something registered to them that is considered taxable, then you have to pay taxes. That's just it. So, but you can operate, you can not use that and then utilize a tax exempt creation entity, either with your, your all caps name, you can create a whole one using your whole name. You can call it um, Emerald City and you can operate with your employer. You can operate with whatever as a private entity. But you cannot simply just go, yeah, you know what? I don't feel like not paying taxes anymore. Why? Because you have an agreement. You belong to that PMA. That's a private membership association. Okay. You have to break all of your contracts or not utilize it for income. And remember, income is the term for that which is taxable from a corporation. So uh, Penzis said W8BN and form 2555. Okay, that form I'm not familiar with. So let me take a look. Uh, Iris, form 2555. Okay, so it says here that form is foreign earned income. Okay, so that shows how you qualify for a bona fide residence test or physical presence test. How much of your foreign earned income is excluded and how to figure the amount of your allowable foreign housing exclusion or deduction. Foreign earned income exclusion. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Um, Jeff says, is the W-4 sandwich a real thing? Well, see, that's a good question for Sherry. I've heard some successes with it. I thus far have not heard anything negative, you know, like the 1099 at certain aspects of that. Uh, but we'll wait to see when, when Sherry gets on here. She informed me that she is willing to answer any questions that she can get. Um, I imagine there's going to be a lot tonight because we're already at 300 people, so we will try. Um, 8832 form. Okay, let's take a look at that one. Okay, so the 8832 is an eligible entity, uses form 8832 to elect how it will be classified for federal tax purposes. Okay, as a corporation, a partnership, or an entity disregarded as separate from its owner. Okay, looks like you can also use that for a new mailing address with them as well or update it. Okay. All right. And uh, she changed my life. Most people live in fear. Yeah, she was, she was uh, deep 
in, I mean, she was waxing people for them and didn't even think twice about it, you know, until she, she heard about the challenge. And much like any good person out there, especially those people who are natural persons and loyal to the Constitution of the United States of America, like some of our other low level functionaries out there who are afraid to take the challenge and want to would prefer to harass me, but don't want to question the paperwork. They don't want to question why the name is in all caps. They don't want to question their bosses. Then they're they're the cowards. They're the traitors. They're the ones who aren't opening their minds. I mean, that you know what? I, I, I was talking about this in one of my uh, consultations. People ask me, was I always Mr. Um, you know, bad wolf, right? Or there's the poet, and you know it. Um, what's going on, Bronze? And Darby says, hit the uh, the like button, good people. Darby has spoken. Make it so. So, and Honey Badger, there you go. Um, no, I was not always the bad wolf. I was literally no no different than the average person out there. I was an agent for the government, if you will. I mean, I never held an official sworn in title, but a regular taxpayer, 14th Amendment citizen, is one of their agents. All right. And uh, I used to hear people talking like me all the time. And I was like, look at this guy, anti-American. He doesn't even, he, this guy doesn't know what's going on. You know, I, I was that guy, straight up. Super intelligent, but I never studied this, so I didn't believe it. And then I decided to take up the challenge. I was like, you know what? I'm going to research the things that these guys are saying, and I'm going to prove them wrong. That's what happened. I was like, there's no way they're right. There's no way they're whatever this stuff is is real. And that's all I got here. I took the challenge too. I really think it was the universe guiding me to get here because, um, yeah, a lot of things on, on along the way were kind of kept pushing me into this. So, um, Dor says, do you know of this form A14135 title application and promissory note for certificate of discharge of property from federal no, I have not heard of that one. I'm going to check that one out. Uh, form A-141. Do, do, do. 35, let's see. Huh? Huh. I think, okay. All right. All right. I don't think I knew that one. So that is fire. I will have to check that one out in more depth and maybe we'll have a video on it. Root words. What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> Someone's got to, you know, the bad wolf's got to knock the little, little piggy's house down a little bit. Arlene says, aloha from California. Hello, Arlene. What's going on, Rotten Apple? There's always got to be one of those in the bunch. <laughs> well, that's part of it. But remember, they did the whole slidey, slidey thing um, to uh, do what they did with the 13th and 14th Amendments. Oh yeah, that's why. Yeah, they were con they were conditioning us to hate reading because they didn't want us to know the truth. Why do you think a uh, little 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 beard guy over in Europe uh, burned all the books? Because if you don't read the books, you won't know your history. If you don't know your history, then you don't know where your ancestors came from and what's really yours. See, that's the difference: is that these elites and whatever else. They make their kids read. They make them know this stuff, 
Why do you think, you know, they they end up moving the way they do? Because they're raised to believe that they're superior to us. And are they? Well, I like to think not. But if they're going to read and we're not, then they got the leg up on us. All right, Charles. Yeah, hit me up. I'm going to tell you guys right now, I don't know what happened this week, but I am nearly booked solid for the whole week. I have literally almost nothing until Monday at this point in time. Um, so, yeah, it's all voluntary. Well, it's voluntary if you are not a 14th Amendment U.S. citizen, which is also the other side of you. See, they have permission to collect taxes as long as you are a willing participant in their system. If you're using their stuff, they have the right to tax you. But you have the right to become untaxable. What's going on, Gilmore? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're just waiting on Sherry. She should be here in about 10 minutes. And then I may have uh, my, uh, good, my good buddy, uh, Floyd... The Fearless Floyd from the Fearless Floyd show might be on tonight. Um, Auto, yeah, I sent all that back, refused, and um, challenged their jurisdiction with the uh, letter, as usual, as I've done three times before now. Um, so it's the ball's in their court. Remember, guys, uh, let me know in the comments what republic of what state you're from. Um, spout out the name of your micronation or whatever private trust. Well, no, actually, no, not your private trust. Don't do that one. We don't want your name out there in the public. Don't do that. <laughs> but uh, you can send, send a hello with your family name. Just say greetings. Talk to other people if you want to um, have other people. Know that you're in, you know, whatever state you might want to try to hook up or link up, whatever. Um, you can do that if you want to send a little shout out for your, uh, you know, website or your YouTube channel. Go ahead, get down in the comments. This is what we're here to do. Yeah, you have to read, you have to read, and we have to stop accepting their colors and their titles and do our own. Seize the vehicle and being sued. Um, well, you need to either send them a promissory note or do a 1099C and cancel the debt. At the end of the day, everything is about an, a debt being owed. Okay, or watch my video on uh, discharging. Ooh, excuse me. Adam Pro, what's going on? How long have you not paid taxes? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I pay taxes on my public side for things I do with that public entity. For the things that I have that are not that are entities that are not taxable, well, hence you don't have to pay taxes. So you can't just not pay. Okay. You have to either not use your public side, um, and then use and then operate open up a new entity that's not taxable, like a 508 C1A, unincorporated association, a PMA, uh, a private trust. Any of those, you you cannot simply just go. Eh, I'm good. Think doesn't work that way because you have a contract in play, and if you're generating money through that entity, and it's taxable, then you have to pay the taxes. It's no different than if you had no roof on your head and it's about to snow in a week, and you want me to come over there because we have a contract to um, fix your roof and replace it. And then yet you see me at the beach, you know, later on that week. You're going to be like, uh, Wolf, you should be fixing my roof. Ah, it's just a contract. I don't, I don't feel like doing that. It's a contract. 
see, the state creates a trust, a business trust. It's a business, it's public, it's, the all caps name is a taxable entity and it is, it can be used for private stuff and it can be used for public stuff, but it's taxable when it's generating income. Okay. And so if you, if you report or your employer reports that you, are generating income and you are listed as a taxable entity. So even, even a tax exempt entity can do certain things that are taxable. Okay. So that's why you want to make sure that you're not utilizing anything that is truly a taxable thing, you know, like your 401ks and whatever else, you know? So yeah, you definitely want to create an entity uh, Freeji says, I don't pay income tax. Exactly. Remember, uh, labor and bartering, okay, if that's how you're making your money through your labor, it's not taxable. But I would also create an entity, micronation, trust, whatever else, to use that to generate your uh, compensation by means of labor instead of generating income with your taxable entity. Yep, you can create a religious corporation, an, un an unincorporated um, association. Yep. Uh, let's see, somebody said here, donate your income to your nonprofit. There you go. <laughs> There's more than one way to get the job done. Um, you don't want to be the beneficiary. That means you're under the thumb of the trustee. Well, the trustee is supposed to, depending on how it's set up, they are supposed to uh, take care of the beneficiary and do the bidding of said ben of the beneficiary unless you are a beneficiary of their trust, okay? But they should they should be always acting as the trustee for us to do what we say, because we are the grantors and the beneficiaries. Create a religious corporation and conduct all business through that. Yep, there you go. Yep, I haven't figured out how to to get all the money back that we've put in um, only we, you know, but if somebody has done it, yeah, let me know. Yeah. Private trust or a 508 C1A, not a 503, um, not a 501 C3, but is there a 503? I think there is. <clears throat> I don't know all of them by heart. I just know the main ones I use. There you go. There you go. <laughs> um, well, see, David, the problem is, is that we gave our, our parents gave the state our lowercase name. They transmute it to all uppercase, which is Capitus Demutium Maxima. And they issued us a birth certificate. And then when we use that birth certificate by how the parents filled out the Social Security uh, card SS5 form, check this off as a U.S. citizen, which is a taxpayer. OK, so is it really still your name if, if they have it listed in their database as taxable? Well, not in the all lowercase, but the upper and lowercase, if you want to be technical, is mixing jurisdictions, so it's still somewhat taxable. And the all caps is definitely taxed because of how it's been registered. All right, guys, we got 382 people in here, and Monkey says we only got 64 likes. YouTube, YouTube throttling down the likes. All right, so let's get those likes going. If you haven't hit a like already, let's do it, unless you're going to save it for later. Uh, 
Uh, now this is this is a question for Sherry when she gets here. <laughs> All right, so let me check my email, make sure I didn't get she didn't change her mind. And uh, make sure I send her another invite just in case. Okay, gonna reply, paste. Just in case. All right, let's see what else we got here. Yes, all the videos, uh, Tony, will always be on live. Um, you can go to my YouTube channel. They'll always be there. Oh, here we go. We in the green room. <laughs> all right. All right. Woo, here we go. Hold on. Let me, uh, let, me look, let me look presentable here. You know, get a little water. How's my hair? Is it good? Okay. All right. Without further ado, we have Sherry Peel Jackson in the green room. All right. So uh, we already got 400 people in the comments section and viewing concurrently. Uh, this is definitely one of the highest um, watched concurrent I've ever had. So we're going to thank Sherry for that. Without further ado, let's bring on the lady of the hour. All right. Sherry, how are you doing? Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you great. Thanks, James, for having me on. All right, all right. This, um, I'm a big fan, first of all. Um, I have followed you for years. You were one of the first inspirations to um, help me see through the, the fifth veil and uh, to put some legitimacy to all of this. And I don't know if you had a chance to really see much of my channel or what I all do, um, but I've been a freedom fighter Um patriot, national, uh, lover of America, because I believe America is, is within all of us and is our duty to uh, take uh, control of the steering wheel. So for those people who don't know you, I already see the comments lighting up. Awesome. Hi, Sherry. Yay. Oh, my God, it's Sherry. Um, so you've got lots of fans here. OK, so you've done a lot of work and there's a lot of people who respect what you have done. So thank you. So I'm going to turn the floor over to you, um, let people know who you are. Um, what you do, what you're doing, how they can find you. Um, I'm just going to sit back and let you do yours. So okay. go ahead and uh, take care of Miss Lady. Okay. For those of you that don't know me, I am Sherry Peel Jackson. I am a retired certified public accountant and certified fraud examiner and a former IRS agent. I worked at the IRS from 1988 to 1995, and I was an internal revenue agent. So during that period of time, I saw a lot, of course. And towards the end of my career, I started noticing a lot of things that were wrong. The disparity in how different people were treated. For example, the small mom and pop business, that, that business was treated very differently from the larger corporations and just how they operated. But I still didn't know about what we know today about the fraud until I left. And I think that's because People were afraid to talk to me about it when I was still there. So when I left in 95, between then and like 99, I would hear from different people, you know, different comments about, you know, they heard that the, you know, our taxes were not, they were being misappropriated and income taxes are fraud and things, but nobody really, you know, got into depth about it. And I, I went along with my CPA firm, which is what I did after I left. And then Late 99, I started hearing it more. I picked up a client. I deal with churches a lot. So uh, one of the pastors had me contact one of the parishioners that was talking about it. So I listened to this lady and she literally water hosed me down with a whole bunch of information that, you know, I learned a long time ago from my dad, you know, to seek out the truth, because if you are operating if you aren't operating in the truth, your reality is a fallacy. So I started listening to the lady and then she called me back a couple of weeks after that water hose session and said, hey, some of the things that I told you 
are in the USA Today. Go pick up a USA Today. So I did. And there was an article in there by a group called We the People Foundation for Constitutional Education. And it said something to the effect that, dear, we the people, the income tax is a fraud. So I started reading it. And there were two things that caught my attention within that full page ad. Number one was a challenge by uh, a man that offered $50,000 for anybody who could prove that people had to file income tax returns and pay an income tax. That was the first one. I said, oh, okay. The second thing that I noticed was uh, another former IRS person, which was a criminal investigation division agent named Joe Bannister, had written a report showing his findings that there was no law that required anybody to file and pay. So I immediately ordered a couple of Joe's reports, which were in book form. And then I immediately started to go after that $50,000 reward. And the man's name that put that reward out was Bill Conklin or William Conklin. And it took me about maybe a couple of weeks to figure out that this wasn't gonna be an easy task, but I didn't quit. When I left the IRS, I was allowed to take my codes and regulations with me. So I had that information. I had the Internet and, you know, some other things. So a couple of months later, I realized that I wasn't going to be able to prove this man wrong at all. And the more I looked into it and got Joe's books and some other things, the more I realized that our money was being stolen from us. So being the type of person that I am, I didn't keep it a secret. I actually started immediately talking to people about it. I scheduled a little seminar, about 20 people showed up and Joe Bannister ended up getting in touch with me. He's on the West coast. And, you know, because I put in the, I put within the envelope that I sent him with the money in it for his two reports, I put that I was a former agent. So we all hooked up together and the next thing you know, we're in the newspaper. We were in the USA Today Today ad. There was another agent named John Turner, and he was a revenue agent. So here you had a revenue agent. I'm sorry, he was an, a revenue officer. That's the one that collects. So he was a revenue officer, John, and then I was a revenue agent. And then Joe was a criminal investigation division agent. So our three pictures were in the USA Today and it said, what do these three people have in common? They're all former IRS employees who haven't been able to find the law. And it was on from then because when you have people saying stuff like that and they don't have a background like we had, it's a different. But at, the, at that time I had nine letters behind my name and it's like, I'm somebody that has studied and researched and so was Joe and so had John. So we started doing seminars around the country. And I think at first that, you know, they may have thought we were going to go away or uh, at least we were low flying gnats on the radar at first. But then it got to the point where people started listening and they got scared. They had congressional hearings with our faces blown up on e on easels in, in, in the Congress. And we were not allowed to speak. So that's when they started. That's when they decided that they were going to start going after us. Uh, they prosecuted Joe first. Joe was the darling of the tax movement and he had some great lawyers with, and he had a thinking jury that made a lot of difference. Then they prosecuted a couple of other people and then they got to Tommy Cryer. Now you got to know about Tommy Cryer. Tommy Cryer was a lawyer in Shreveport, Louisiana. Tommy Cryer hadn't filed tax returns in 10 or so years. And he put together a memorandum full of Supreme Court cases and state court cases that say that income is corporate profit. Tommy Cryer won his case about three months before they brought me to trial. By the time they brought me to trial, they could not afford to lose. They brought people down from Washington, D.C. to prosecute me. They kept shutting me down. And they wouldn't allow witness. It was a three ring circus, basically. So the jury, one of the things that you that happens in the beginning of a trial when you and I started not to go. Literally, I started to have somebody take a straw doll, you know, for the straw man there. <laughs> and, I, and, and I was talked out of it by Joe because they, you know, they even though these things are true, 
they know that the majority of people don't believe them. So he basically talked me out of it so I wouldn't look like somebody that was crazy. Right. Yeah. But the thing that I wanted to ask the jury, James, was this. Would you be afraid to acquit Miss Jackson for fear that the IRS was going to come after you? And I can just about guarantee you that every hand would have gone up and that would have been jury nullification. They would not let uh, my team ask that question. So it ends up the charges. Let's back back up. The charges against me were four counts of willful failure to file tax returns, which is a misdemeanor. Uh -huh. Once the jury came back with guilty verdicts on all four counts, the judge immediately left the chambers. She said nothing else and left. <laughs> so I got notice of a um, a sentencing, which was a couple of months later. It was on Valentine's Day, actually, 28, uh, 2008. And I had some I had fired the lawyer because I realized there was something going on there and gotten some pretty good people to help me. But they were adamant about making sure that I was made an example of. And during that period of time, whatever I said didn't matter. The prosecution asked for an upward departure, meaning they wanted to give me more time because I had been very, very vocal in the tax movement. I was speaking all over the country regularly. Uh -huh. And when the judge finally wanted to shut all argument down, which I was defending myself at that time, this is what she said. And this is how she said it. Now, mind you, my charges were willful failure to file a tax return. I didn't file tax returns. I was practicing what I preached. I knew that the, the resources that they were taking were mine and I aimed to keep what was mine. But this is what the judge said and this is how she said it. I know you homeschool your children, Miss Jackson, and I know you got a lot of family support but you can't run around the country telling people not to file income tax returns. And I looked her dead in the eye and I said, I've never done that because I had never told anybody what to do. I always said when we did our presentations, don't listen to me, but don't listen to them either. Do your own research, do your right. own due diligence and decide whether you want to be a slave or get off the plantation. And I guess that just irked them, you know, and so that hurt her, her her um, comment to me at the end of that that sentencing hearing basically told me that it wasn't about the fact that I wanted to keep what I earned. It was about the fact that I was telling everybody the truth. And so they gave me a four year consecutive sentence, not concurrent, same charge now. They could have given me the one year for the, the same charge. They gave me a four year sentence on a misdemeanor charge. Now that is really unprecedented. So I ended up spending three of those years in a federal prison. The reason that it was three instead of four is that in their, their government uh, system, the Federal Bureau of Prisons, you get six months halfway house and six months good time if you're a model prisoner. Okay. So I, I came out of there three years to the day. They didn't even let me out a day early, three years <laughs> to the day after they put me in there. And, um, you know, I learned a lot. I mean, I, it was an education. My father is very, um, he's, he's very prolific and he's very pragmatic. And when I went in, he said, make this a university. He said that when Nelson Mandela was in there, and he came out because he was over there. My father was in South Africa uh, when when Nelson Mandela got out. And he said, you okay. know, somebody asked him, you know, how is it that you came out of 27 years being in prison and, you know, you're not bitter? And he said, because I made it a university. So I learned a lot. Um, I taught a lot in there. I taught some women and basically got a chance to look at the world in a different light. I had grown up uh, very... I asked both my parents and they said I was a very compliant child. I became a Christian in, in 1986, never looked back. And I had been in a Christian bubble since then. And that bubble was popped. I mean, prison is something <laughs> else now. It was, it was, it was a deal. Yeah. So I learned a lot. And concerning the way that I handle life 
and finances now, I know that there is a system in place. And that system was put together to have certain people at the top and certain people at the bottom. Not even necessarily a middle class. Right now, we are one of the only countries that are floating the middle class. There are very few, few of them. When mm -hmm. I travel the world, they have rich people and they have whole people. Yep, that's so, it. No in between. And 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 my father told me when I was 15 years old, there will be no middle class. And we're we're just about there. So the way I run my life now is I try to educate people concerning finances and their system and how you can learn their system and beat them at their own game so that you and your family can thrive instead of just surviving day to day. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So when I first, obviously I didn't know all aspects of this. Um, but for me, just hearing about your story through other people and then I like to tell people I'm older than the internet, you know, so uh, it wasn't like it is now. Where you can just go, you know, it was very light use in those days, but um, it was amazing. The things that the, the people who had seen you and met you were like, you know, she's this amazing person. She's got, you know, this inf I was blown away and everybody I've ever heard uh, talk about you are always amazed. And so, you know, that's why I was like, ah, you know, she's probably busy. I don't know if she'll have time to come on the show. It'd be huge. It'd be like, you know, to me, you, it, this is all I do is this kind of stuff, you know, and to me, you are a celebrity. OK, you know, so um, I'm looking at the comments and people are like, you know, uh, salute this this warrior woman and, you know, uh, thank you for your sacrifices. Praise to the most high. Um, you know, you you've made a a change out there. So your sacrifice definitely does not go unseen, unheard, and unknown, and unappreciated. Thank you. Um, and uh, so thank you for all the things you have done, seen, unseen, heard, unheard, because, you know, I've been through my fair share. Everybody who gets on or we, who gets to where we're at, and I'm not saying we're all, you know, at the same exact level, but, you know, we're in that that bracket, we'll just say, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, you know, you've gone through some struggle and, and that where the where the average person doesn't even know this this world is even a real thing. You know, here we are either a part of the game or we stumbled into the wrong door at the wrong time at the wrong party. And we're like, oh, so <laughs> this is what's going on. I'll just close the door here. Uh, let you guys do your thing. You know, and then here we are. You know, I, I didn't set out to to be here and having a platform and, and doing this i was private i still to this day got uh family members who don't know where i live so i still i still try to stay. Wow. wow i still i still try to stay private when i'm not on on here i'm in the private you know i rarely go out i just kind of read books and you know hit one or two little places and come right back home so definitely definitely can understand a good degree um, we might be joined by a co-host. Um, his name is uh, Fearless Floyd. He might jump on. Um, he's helping somebody else, so he he will probably be on in, in a little while. Okay. Otherwise, yeah, if, if there's any other stories you want to share, if you want to talk about your, your channel, because I know you've got one and you've got a website, and just let everybody know more about you. You know, just break it down. And if you see some questions, you can you can see the comments, right? I cannot. Okay. What okay. do I do to do that? Um, let me see. Here. I see them now because I clicked comments. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was in, it was on private chat, so I can see the comments. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Feel free to go through. Um, I don't, yes. If you see anything you want to answer, mm -hmm. um, or if you want to say appreciation to somebody or whatever, just go for it. Go ahead. This is, this is your, your um, this is a Sherry takeover. So make it, make it happen. <laughs> so I'd appreciate it if you did put a question in there that you put it in there again so I can see it because obviously I wasn't seeing everything, but um, there, there are a lot of people out here that are lost. I, I look at this whole thing as if we are living in the matrix and there are some people that know we're in the matrix and they want to stay in there. For those of you who know about that movie, we're not concerned about those people. We're concerned about the people who have questions, you know, what's going on here? Why is it that, 
I'm not able to go forward. I put two steps forward and then I get knocked back. If the system is designed for you to fail, it doesn't matter whether you are on the East Coast, West Coast, it really actually doesn't matter what country you're in. But when you start to pay attention to what's going on and turn off what I call the electronic income reducer and the electronic intellect reducer, which is the television, then you're going to wake up and then you'll start seeing uh, some solutions. For example, um, there are a lot of TV shows. I don't know what the TV shows are because I don't have TV. I have a I have a screen like a, a what do you call that? A, a smart TV. But it's usually on some educational programs for my granddaughter or some kind of documentary that I want to watch. I don't watch, I don't have the regular cable stations or anything like that because it's full of propaganda. And we need to stop paying attention to that and pay attention to the things that are going to make you and your family thrive. For example, the monetary system. What do you know about them? I'm sure your audience is different. I'm sure they know about the, <laughs> owner of the monetary system. I don't have to say that. But what's going on with the dollar? The dollar is worth three cents right now. What are you doing concerning getting silver, getting gold, getting, and what I call hard assets. I don't invest in anything that can disappear with the blink of, eye, of an eye. So I don't have IRAs, 401ks, mutual funds, stocks and bonds. I don't have any of that because it's totally controlled. There is a video out there on YouTube and it's a 60 minutes video. It's, it's maybe about three or four years old and it's called, either the stock market is rigged or is the stock market rigged. And it basically shows you how they rig the stock market. And when I moved to Atlanta from Detroit back in the day, uh, I had not heard of wrestling. And so they had these wrestling and all the kids at school were really into this wrestling. And every Saturday they look forward to this wrestling and I would watch it a couple of times. And my dad came in there and he said, that's not real wrestling. Real wrestling is on a, a, a mat that's about three inches right there. <laughs> that's that's just running around entertaining. And after that, I never watched wrestling before. I, I don't have time, you know, for something that's fake. And we really at this point don't have time for that. I invest in silver, gold, real estate and other items. Um, somebody says, Miss Sherry, we are doomed because the system is winning. Uh, the majority of the people that don't know what's going on, I don't, I don't subscribe to myself and others being doomed. Those of us that are preparing, we can teach others, but at the same time that we're teaching others, we need to be, be making preparations for ourselves. So forgetting about the stocks, bonds, and you know, somebody says silver, gold backs and silver backs. I don't know what that means, but I don't invest in... I invest in real silver that I can hold in my hands and gold in my hands. As a matter of fact, I just ordered a couple of thousand dollars of it today because those uh, silver certificates or whatever, all that trading is the same. It's just a mess. Um, I, I, my thing is educating people. Before the pandemic, I was speaking around the country and trying to educate people and get them on the right track concerning how they could handle their finances because you need finances to live. You need finances to thrive. And after that, uh, I've done a little bit. I haven't been doing much on my uh, YouTube channel simply because I'm creating digital courses. I actually have clients that I uh, that I serve one on one, but I want to make a bigger impact. So I have been spending my days and nights, like sometimes till three o'clock in the morning, creating a set of digital courses so that I can put it out there and people can learn these things. Let me see if they're are some questions. All right, I'm gonna jump in real quick, Sherry. This is um, Fearless Floyd, Fearless Floyd. This is Sherry Peel. Hi, Fearless Floyd. Hi, Good it's evening. a pleasure to meet you. Likewise, likewise. Thank you very much. Right. Uh, Sherry uh, Floyd is also another uh, national who believes as we see and provides lots of great information and has helped tons of people. Right. I try to only surround myself around people who are quality and have the understanding that we do. Um, and uh, he's uh, definitely, you know, a, a good friend, good personal friend of mine. And uh, I know he, we, when I mentioned this, you know, back screen some time ago, uh, he was like, oh, yeah, I definitely want to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, be a part of that. So, um, but yeah, share the floor is yours. So, uh, yeah, continue by all means. I am, I am looking for 
Yeah, Detroit here. I see that. I, I left Detroit a long time ago, but um, I learned enough. And I, I, I'll say that my background is there, and that's where I got my toughness from. I don't see. I, you know what? This I didn't realize that. Um, how yeah, be easy is it to exit this fraudulent system? It's really not easy to exit mm -hmm. simply because by the time you realize you're in the system, they really have their tentacles in you already. But what you have to do is you have to cut them one by one. You have to figure figure things out. Um, you know, being being a citizen versus not being a citizen, getting involved in the banking system or exiting exiting it as much as you can making sure that you have flags posted in different places. What I did was I watched what the wealthy do. The wealthy don't just sit and have everything they have in one place. They have real estate in other countries. They have businesses in other countries. So when the excrement hits the portable cooling device here in the United States, <laughs> they're going to have a place to go. Are you going to have a place to go? What are you doing to make sure that you have somewhere else to go when it happens? Are you still buying rims and flat screen TVs or are you putting together your pennies to make sure that you have something going on? I saw something about a fixed income. I know that there are a lot of people on a fixed income. I'm kind of hard line about things and I, I, I know that there's a way to do everything. You could be on a fixed income, but what about you? making some other income. I, I, I have a lot of clients that have jobs, but what I tell them is start a home-based business. When you come home from your nine to five, do not sit there and turn on the electronic income reducer. You need to come home and decompress, take some time, eat your dinner, play with your children or spend time with your family. But after that, instead of, you know, this right here or this right here, get started on that home-based business. So one of the things that I do regularly now is teach people how to start home-based businesses all the way from what business is best for them to making it scale. Because that extra income that you get, if you're on a fixed income, then you probably can have time to do other things that make money. I'm looking for do me a favor if you have a question put like three question marks behind it so that i can see that it's a question <laughs> do you have a website or a channel so my youtube channel i had one that i started that i just haven't had time to keep up with and it's called wake the people but my regular youtube channel is sherry peel jackson my website is wake the people.com i do have another website specifically to help churches and that's sherry peel jackson.com so everything either sherry peel jackson or wake the people Let me sounds, kind of, sounds kind of familiar fearless floyd <laughs> yeah. right yeah it does do you still tour at all i i do travel except for i don't foot the bill when i when i was traveling before it was kind of interesting because somebody would call me, let's say from Dallas and say, hey, I got a group, you know, it's about 51 strong and we really want to see you come. And, you know, we're going to have this and we're going to invite a whole bunch of people. So I would book a flight and get a hotel room and a hotel meeting room and get them the information out there for them to pass the flyers out. And they didn't have any skin in the game. So it was like they disappeared or maybe two or three people showed up and it was up to me to in invite the people that I knew. So I stopped doing that. So if someone wants me to come, then they can they can take care of the the airfare and the hotel and the speaking and though i've done a, a couple of those i haven't done but one since the pandemic was was you know subsiding right. but i do i don't mind coming out because i do love to speak because there are certain things that i say in public in that room that i probably wouldn't say on the internet so i see that question uh, <laughs> where do you buy your silver and gold from volunteer precious metals volunteer precious metals is run by a family uh the father of which was one of the first people that was prosecuted by the irs for willful failure to file tax return Vol volunteer precious metals.com is where it is um let's see 
how easy is it to exit this fraudulent system? I, I talked about that one. It's not easy. And it, it depends on what you want to do. It depends on your situation. Because everybody, the people that I talk to, they say, well, you know what? If I try to do some of the things that James does, and it's not, you know, it's not to my benefit because I've got a six-figure job and I, you know, these things, if 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 the person has a lot already vested in the system, there are ways to ease their way back from it, sometimes not get out of it. But as you know, the wealthy don't pay taxes. So all you got to do is really realize what the wealthy do. What does Donald Trump do? Remember during the that what what they called an election situation in 2016 i believe it was when the heel the beast went up against donald trump and he <laughs> said donald trump didn't pay his taxes and everybody said <gasps> and then everybody started calling me did you hear did you hear and i said the man said he was a smart man he used his net operating loss to see that the, the tax code as it is if you're within the system is written for businesses so yeah. if you take advantage of it then you're, you're going to be with him and let me say something about that there are people that want to operate outside of the system i salute you but 99 percent of the people that i meet they don't want to they, they pick their battles and that's not one of them they don't want to give their money over to the insidious representatives of satan better known as the irs <laughs> however they don't want they don't want to rock the boat so then they are at liberty to learn ways to reduce or eliminate the taxes within the system and that's that's one of the things that i teach where can i find your digital courses i am praying that by june they will be up right now i'm i'm vigorously working on it what it is is i'm putting the verbiage together for them so it will flow then i will be recording them in video form and then i will have it you literally have homework there'll be work worksheets and homework and all that so that i'm working every day every night on those courses and I'll definitely let James know when they're done, but the first course is going to be for the general public and other courses after that, I'm going to have like how to, how to start a business in 35 days, how to write a book because I've written eight books. And by the way, I have books on my websites and I have books on Amazon, depends on how, how you want to get them. Of course, they're probably going to get out quicker with Amazon. I don't know. Um, let's see, where can we buy a physical silver and gold? I answered that one. <clears throat> I see that one several times. Yeah, we got almost 600 people watching, which is a record for my concurrent viewing on YouTube. So thank you for that, Sherry. You're uh, welcome. And uh, yeah, just skip around, uh, grab any questions. Floyd, did you have anything that you wanted? Um, yeah, or, let's, or, uh, let's, or, let's talk about some of these forms that are being filed. Okay, specifically and, uh, what kind of forms? Well, you know, there's the W4 sandwich process and the 99A <laughs> process. And, you yeah. know, I, I, I know. I, so I get a lot of calls from people that have done certain things. And I think that there, there are people that are private that do these things and it works for them. And sometimes I think that when people get in groups, they become a target. And no matter what the paperwork says, whether it's right or wrong, they get in trouble. So I get these calls. But some of the 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 the, the law behind this paperwork is where you dotted your eyes and you cross your T, you turn that paperwork in, and depending on what kind of paperwork it is, people get their money back. They get money and they or they'll get something that's discharged and all that. When it gets to the point where the IRS notices it. They know that you're right. They know that you're right, but they just can't afford to let thousands and then millions of people get out of the sheeple corral. <laughs> yep. For example, there was a man, uh, a, a guy named Dr. Livingstone, and this was back in the 90s, that was having mortgages discharged. People he was filing paperwork that basically said that when you sign the mortgage papers, you're actually the one that's, you know, making the money for it, which is true. And that the, the, the premise, the whole premise behind that is that a bank nor anybody can loan credit. So James, if you wanted to borrow 10 K from me, I would have 
I would have to give you 10K that I worked for. I would have to come out of my vault and give you 10K. But the banks don't do that. They just, you know, create the money out of the thin air. Say, Here's 10K. Well, that's really illegal. And what Dr. Livingstone was showing in law, in paperwork, in, um, I think it's called Modern Mechanics, which is yep. the Federal Reserve book. He had all this, he had his whole case together. And he had gotten about seven or eight mortgages just totally wiped away. There it is, modern money mechanics. And it, it, it tells you all these things. So he was well studied. And mm. after he got, you know, some him and his family members mortgages dismissed, he started doing this as a business. So he said, okay, I've gotten these seven or eight mortgages dismissed. Pay me this amount of money based on, you know, your, your mortgage size or whatever. And I'll, I'll do the same. Well, people started throwing their wallets at Dr. Livingstone, right? <laughs> and uh, I got in on the tail end of it. What what started happening is he became, again, more than a low-flying net on the government's radar. And the judges in every district that he was filing these cases for these people started summarily dismissing these cases. So they, they at some point all got together and said, we can't let this happen. We know this is true. Yeah, he, he got rid of these mortgages here, but all these mortgages, they, he, he, because he had put his system together almost like in a template form. And so he was he was putting these cases out everywhere. Hey, this mortgage, is, it needs to go because you can't lend credit and all that. They started dismissing his cases based on the banksters getting together with the government. I call it the corporatocracy, the corporations, the government and the banksters. They all started to get together and then the people were getting angry at Dr. Livingstone because it wasn't working anymore. And he couldn't control that because he knew what he was doing was right. But he realized that the government wasn't going to let that continue. And they drove that poor man to a heart attack and he died. Hmm. But to, suffice it to say, fearless Floyd, that people can go ahead and do that and stand hmm. on whatever they whatever they do and you know depending on who they get it you know sometimes these things work a lot of times they'll they might have to just you know put it through a couple of times but mm -hmm. he's, this this paperwork we we do have a problem here we are human resources our slave surveillance number is being used to fund this government in some way these things are true now the there as more and people more and more people get to know these things you know, some things might change, but there we, we haven't re reached critical mass with this information yet. You understand critical mass? We right. have not reached the point where so many people know that they can't get away with it yet. There right. are too many people that are afraid of the insidious representatives of Satan. Too many people. So that's why they keep taking us down like that. Well, and they're, uh, they're conditioned. I mean, we were all conditioned since, you know, we were uh, in children, uh, little ones, um, to not know what's going on. They hit it right in front of our face. And as I tell people, if you're happy inside the uh, the bird cage, so be it. Just continue to stay a 14th Amendment U.S. citizen. I'm the first one to say that, well, first of all, this is all education and entertainment for those people watching. Okay. And that, um, you know, if you want, it's, it's, it's not easy doing what we do. Okay. You know, it's, it's not easy uh, stepping forward and talking about this information living a normal life as much as in the private as we can. Um, and it's it's not for everybody. But if you're happy inside, you know, the cage, stay in there. You know, if you learn to operate um, like I do, probably 90 percent in the private and 10 percent in the in the public. Yeah. Great. If you want to do 50 50 or you want to go 100 over there, it's the point is, is that it's all of your abilities. It's your decisions. Don't do everything I say or Floyd, or Sherry, just because we're saying it, you have to make up your own mind. You have to decide which pieces or which whole parts that you want to do, but that's up to you because it'll be you dealing with that particular agency or that particular whatever. But the whole thing is, is that we don't know how to do commerce. I did a um, YouTube uh, live last night mm -hmm. and it always comes down to two things, jurisdiction, and how to do commerce or business we don't most of us don't know how to do that we didn't even know we were doing that with our our all caps name and our socials in, anyway right. 
You know, we did. I didn't know I was already running a business. I was just trying to scrape by as JMC Lovett. <laughs> Much less that I know, even though in my mind, because I always liked business, I was telling people, you know, run your life like a corporation. Right. You know, you guys are giving away benefits and this and that and whatever else anyway. And then the moment I tell somebody like um, one girl came to me for uh, advice and I said, if you were running a business and somebody was, you know, a company you were working with and it was no longer providing a product or a service, would you continue to keep paying them? She's like, oh, hell no. I was like, but you do that with all these other people in your life. Right. And then they go, oh, right. Right. yeah. So fear, every- fear is very, very real. Oh, yeah. And yeah. the the powers that be, the corporatocracy put together, they, they got uh, spin doctors a long time ago who put out information to make sure that they were able to coax the masses into making, you know, just making these decisions or having these things imprinted in your mind. So everybody knows that saying there's no such n- no such thing in what is it life, but no sure thing in life, but. And everybody yeah. knows the answer to that. Yeah. There's yeah. no sure. Well, that's <laughs> not true. You know, there's the death is sure, but the taxes, you know, they put that on there to make sure that people, you know, comply. So those are kind of things that that we have to watch out for. When you are dealing within the system, like you said, I'm glad that you said it the way you said it, James. Some people are adamant about getting 100% out of the system. Mm-hmm. They need to find a way. Some people are saying, okay, I'm going to get out as much as I can, let's say 80, 90%. Some people say 50%. I'm not going to deal within the system uh, and, unless it comes down to money. Now, that's a big one because, you know, it's hard to live in this country, at least without money. And then it's hard to operate a business without dealing with these banks. So that's another way they pull you in. And this whole thing about them reporting uh, $600 that they're going to try to do, they tried to do it this year, didn't work. They understand that there's what's called a gig economy out there. And a lot of people are making money without getting a government form. Let me back up and say, the IRS has to prove income. You have to prove expenses. So on a 1040 tax return or any one of those forms that are filled out, they have to prove that you made the amount of money that you put on there. So you're telling them, oh, I made $60,000. If you work at AT AT&T and AT&T gave a 1099, I mean a W-2, that W-2 serves as a sworn affidavit that you received uh, taxable income. So that you, they send that in to the IRS and the IRS has an affidavit that you have $60,000 of tax taxable income. When you are an independent contractor and you do a contracting and they send a 1099, that's the sworn affidavit. But then you have people out there that developed during the pandemic that don't have 1099s and W-2s and they're angry about that. So they're basically trying to make sure that people who utilize these merchant accounts like Zelle and PayPal and all those, Stripe, Square, that they cut their limit down from $20,000 to 600 now that's that that should be a red flag to everybody right that's such a drastic change and it's gonna put so much of a burden on these companies which are gonna have to put it back on the businesses so as a person who wants to operate outside of the system i had a a talk with another podcaster not too long ago and, and she's been operating outside the system for a while but she's using these pay um merchant accounts uh-huh so now you know next year She'll be exposed, or most people will be exposed because they're getting ready to rat you out. So, can you post your website, Sherry? I mean, wakethepeople.com. Uh, I don't know how to post it on here. Wake, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, wakethepeople.com. Yeah. Where, when can we get your digital course? Prayerfully, they will be done this summer. I'm, I'm doing. I, I want to do. I don't. I don't want to put together junk. I want to make sure that it's impactful and it's really going to help. I like to produce results. And I want to make sure that the the information out of all the information that I have and all the information that's out there, it's going to take you to the place that you need to go from wherever you are to making sure that you thrive. Starting a home-based business is one of the main things that I advocate for because keep your job, you get benefits on there, you are medical, especially if you have a family, you're going to need that medical care and all that. 
but don't waste any time whatsoever on that television. You can get the equivalent of a, a, a PhD on YouTube. Shows like James, it shows other shows that are teaching you things that you need to do. Shows that are teaching you about finances and other things that are going to help you. Not looking at people's cats jump on the on the ceiling <laughs> and, and, and people's babies running around in circles. And, and I, there's a guy out there with over, I think it's like 14 million subscribers and his phone is trained on his fish and he feeds them twice a day and he has over a million subscribers. I'm not kidding you guys. It's like, I know. I, I've, I've seen some of those. Yeah. 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 And so if people, if people can garner that much attention, James should have a million people right now. It's just you know, <laughs> kind of glad I don't, but, yeah. but if y'all seen the ones, but excuse me, if y'all seen the ones where the guy goes and like, he, he owns a landscaping company, but he goes and like some old, people who can't really function anymore and they can't do their lawn. He'll go do their whole lawn for them. And it's like on a time lapse and these things have like 15 million views and yeah. the whole thing's like 45 minutes from start to finish. Right. So I'm like, wow. seriously, that, I mean, are people this del yeah. disillusioned? Well, the yes. average okay, IQ is, is less than 80, 80 points. Say that honestly. again, James. The average IQ is less than 80. Are you serious? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah, that's all by design. They've made us sheeple and we need to get out of the corral that they've created. Um, there's a corral. So we need to pay attention to the right things. We only have 24 hours in a day. And a lot of times I'm up 16 of those sometimes <laughs> I try not to be, but I'm one of those people that, you know, when, once I get trained in on something, if I'm working on it, sometimes I wake up in front of the computer and uh just because i know the urgency of what's going on i think younger people might the younger people out there are they don't have any hope yeah the the what i see out there when i'm on the streets shows me that these young people don't have any hope and somehow those of us that are older i'm 60 we got to we got to start working on trying to get them some hope because uh, just like somebody in the in the comment section earlier said that we're doomed. I, I don't believe that we're doomed. I believe that if we sit down and do nothing, then we're doomed. But I believe that there's still some hope. There are people out there that want to do something to help. But it, it, it stems around to me finances. I know people who say they don't pay attention to money, but they're broke. You don't want to be broke. You don't necessarily have to be rich and live a lavish lifestyle, but you got to be able to do some nice things for yourself sometime. I, I'm a traveler. I got to make money because I like going international. I mean, I've been to several countries. You know, there are a couple of uh, a couple of other countries on my list that I want to see. But we're uh, actually building a master plan community in Costa Rica. I don't oh, know how many of you know about the Caribbean coast of Costa Rica, but the Caribbean, the Afro-Caribbean coast of Costa Rica is not that well known. The West Coast <laughs> is... The West Coast has the Starbucks, the Hiltons, the Hyatt's, the Marriott's, the, the Hard Rock Cafe. We just got our first McDonald's on the East Coast in 2019. So <laughs> that's, you know, my that's my plan B. I, I don't know if your people pay attention to Sovereign Man. Uh, Simon Black, the Sovereign Man, has, has had a, a channel for a while. But okay. uh, that's where I learned about making sure that I don't have all my eggs in one basket. So ma making sure that when the grocery stores close here in the United States, people are going to lose their minds. Yeah. But if I'm in Costa Rica, I won't starve to death because there's food literally dropping off trees everywhere. Mm -hmm. I won't freeze to death like the people over in Europe right now because it's pretty warm. I'm in Georgia. I'm, I'm about 15 miles east of downtown Atlanta. That's where I live now. Oh, and um, Sorry. <laughs> Georgia, Florida, you know, that kind of weather. I'm used to it. And, you know, you're, you're never more than 15 minutes away from being able to get out in the ocean with a net or a fishing rod. So you're not going to, you know, the grocery store. So what? That yeah. kind of thing. So yeah. um, I know exactly what you're talking about. I've studied that area. And which you said the East Coast, I knew is it's still pristine, untouched. Yes. Just beautiful, okay. crystal clear water, yes. white sandy beaches. It's just yes. spectacular it wildlife is. everywhere yes yeah. i do have a on my website on my uh i'm not i'm sorry on my youtube channel 
I do have a few videos on there. Somebody asked me, do I have a new Facebook account? And yes, somebody hacked my Facebook account. I guess you know, I, was, I was talking too much about the pandemic and all of that. Somebody hacked my Facebook account and, and they erased my 4,000 some odd friends. And so I did start another account. There's not much on there except for me saying that somebody hacked the account and they have some man with a cigar in his mouth on there. But I did I did start another page. I don't do anything with it. I'm more of a Facebook person. I'm sorry. I'm more of a YouTube person than a Facebook person at this point. What about the W4 sandwiches? I'm not sure about that. Um, that's a, a relatively new thing that uh, everyone's doing and somebody came up with. Um, so that's, I, I told people that's still kind of pending because, you know, like, but I think what you already said kind of covers it. Like, and this is what I've been telling my people, my, from my experience, don't mess around with anything financial. That's where they, they lure you in with the candy into the van. Yes. Now, some people it'll go through for and then there'll be some times where you know um let's just say if there, if key people were to do that um they would definitely be the ones to get the uh hey how you doing you know yes, yes um, it would but uh keep in mind that you know uh they don't mind letting some things go through if it's going to net a bigger fish if you guys understand <laughs> yes. or bigger or bigger fish is Yes, that's what they yeah. normally do, James. They they oh. get the, they get the bigger fish, and all the little fish come after the big fish, because the big fish is the one telling the little fish what to do, and that's right. what it. And sometimes that big fish is a part of their organization. Exactly. This yeah. Is our, so that's what I try to tell all my people who watch the channel um, that you know some sometimes. And, and here's the biggest thing I one of the takeaways I always give people vet my information and that's why i love that you said the same thing you know it's definitely a godsend because if if you're watching somebody and they're not first of all they should be telling you this is education and entertainment because you can do whatever you guys want to do next they should really be telling you vet the information vet mine double check your work i tell people i'm i'm on the phone with the irs i'm on the phone with the department of state i'm calling these people i'm not afraid to call them matter of fact they get tired of hearing from me usually um i've had I've literally had them, my phone calls, not go straight through and then call from a friend's phone and they go through. So, because yeah. we know how certain <laughs> They know <things>. your number. <laughs> they, yeah, they, uh, they've made it known. You know, they, they watch my channel. So, hi, guys. Appreciate you guys. Love your, love your work. You know, appreciate you. Treaty with the United States and all Hit that. Hit that like button. <laughs> yes, yes, Hit yes. the like button while you're there. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Can you still exit the system and still work a nine to five? That's that's the way you get started. Purple goddess start. Keep your job, you know, grow your business. I know a guy named Norm that he started his home based business. And a couple of years later, it's actually three years after that. He was making about the same amount of money um, that he in his home based business as he was on his job. And he did this thing. It was so cute um, for Christmas. The, the, the company Christmas party, he came dressed as Santa Claus and he had a big old bag full of gifts and he gave gifts out to all his co-workers and to his boss. And he told his boss, I got to quit you. And he, he didn't come back. So, yeah, just build up your business. Keep your job, mm -hmm. build up your business. And then you can decide whether you want to quit or stay. For example, I have people that that built a home based business and they they quit their job but i also have people that built a home-based business and they stay so that extra money that they're making on in their home-based business they're using to buy hard assets like real estate gold and silver um if a person is on social security disability and they make too much money is there a solution and i know that that's a, another way to keep people down in the system they're basically saying if you if you can't work full time then we don't want you to make extra money there are ways around that. There's, there's, you know, a lot of ways to skin a cat, and it has to do with getting other people in your family or getting other trusted <clears throat> friends and family involved in helping you make that extra money. So it's not showing up under your slave surveillance number. So let's see. One, one of the other things, Sherry, too, is um, I've seen some couple people asking. So this is one of the big ones. I figure this might be a little easier. You know, not this new W four sandwich get all these files, put them together and send them in and hope for the best. 
Okay. Um, are you familiar with the the 1099 A C N C? What can you what can you tell us about that? I know I, I, there's 20 of them in the comments. So if you can share right. an in light, because and I, and I'll be honest, and I know Chris is. Uh, I think it's um, uh, not Chris. Uh, his name popped up. Floyd. I know this is uh, Floyd's cousin, <laughs> um, Hauser. Uh, Ron, he, he got famous doing the 1099A where he alleges you can buy anything you want in the world, 1099A. Uh, and this is what's his claim to fame. And okay. so can you tell us what you know about it? And if, and if you're not versed, I mean, I'm pretty sure that the process hasn't really changed too much, but let us know what you, what you know about that. So I, I don't memorize all these processes, but again, I, I do get these calls and these letters and there, there are probably a myriad of people that have done these things, but the, the, the situations that I know, when they call me, they're in trouble because a young man, um, he was out of Florida, was doing these and paying for stuff. And then they got him and then some other people who paid off some debt with an OID or some other forms, right. they put the debt back on there. So it's like they got rid of it and they went through all this effort. And I, I'm just... I'm I'm not one that, you know, you have to pick your battle. So if you want to do those things, just be prepared. I got one friend that was working with me before my prison stint. He was over 65. And when I got home, I had, I used to have a Toyota 4Runner. I went to the Toyota dealership and he was in there and working. And I said, what are you doing working? And he said, you know, he, he had, he had gotten $130,000 back. And he sent a thousand dollars to help me when I was there. But he said that, you know, after a while, it takes some time. The IRS is like a, a slow moving ship. You know, eight to 18 months later, they come wow. back and knock at the door and say, hey, that money that you got back, that was a mistake. So you yeah. need to pay it back with interest. I've had people call me just in tears and frightened to death because they got ninety three thousand dollars back from filing some paperwork. And then they spent most of it. And then the next thing you know, the IRS is knocking on their door and they don't have the money. They, the only reason that they didn't lock the fella up that I'm talking about is because he was over 65. So they allowed he and his wife to not go to jail, but they had to go back to work to pay that back. So those are my experiences with the OID and the A and all these other things, they accepted for value, all those things like that. I have not seen a, a great success in those. If there are successes out there, they didn't let me know. <laughs> so uh what about a, a, the 1099c for canceling the debt do you know anything about that no i don't know the, the the particular forms that everybody uses but the ones that i have heard about that did get you know the paperwork together the paperwork was nice and canceled it and then they put it back on there mm. yeah they put the they put the debt back on yeah because usually like i said they will I like to call that the bounce back. And I only talked about this once or twice um, on my channel, probably three or four years ago. One of the, when I was in the private right around 20 something and I was starting to run with groups who were doing these things. And I'm trusting the person who's telling me, cause they're talking with conviction and they're like, I've done it. I had no problems. And I'm kind of like a believing skeptic. I'll believe you a little bit, but I'm going to keep my eyes open and look around. So in doing these processes, I started noticing, you know, certain people weren't making it to the meetings anymore. And then I would reach out to them and found out that, yeah, they had done the process. And then years or sometime later, all of a sudden they get the bounce back and they're like, oh, it did, you know, and then, but here, and then here's what the person who was teaching it would do. They would say, oh, you must have done my process wrong. So that's on you because I got away or <clears throat> I mean, I did it the correct way. You know, and I'm like, uh, no, no, you know, and I'll give you one or two. But when it started happening, that's why I was like, OK, so for me. I would prefer to walk three feet in in, in a war in a in a war field and be safe than to walk 20 feet and find a landmine. Yes. OK. Exactly. Now. We all know that things can be discharged because at the end of the day, you know, uh, it's all fiat money. Okay. Right. There's always a way to discharge. All the time I get people asking me, well, how do I do that? How do I, I was like, I don't specialize in that because I know that we can always, there's always some type of way, form, letter, authorize, authorization, a method, a remedy 
to discharge. But when people are going and they're trying to access said accounts and this and that, and you don't know how to do it, or, you know, you're trying to uh, get something for nothing, or you're trying to catch them in a loophole, that's where you're going to get banked. Because that's the, that's the system's way of making money because you're, from their perspective, you are in breach of the trust. Right. And they're not having that. Okay. Right. So that, and that's how they make money. So yeah, will they let some of that stuff go? Sure. For a little while. Right. Unless they see key names pop up, yes. <laughs> you know, yes. then you're like, oh no, tag that one. That one right there. Yeah. You know, and, but, so that's why I always tell people, do not just do everything because you see it. I'm, we're, we, let me tell you, from us three, we'll tell you, we love that you guys are willing to, you know, listen to us and we are good at what we do. We're good at what we know because we've been through it. We've been time tested. We've, we've either had the call, the knock, uh, the time, uh, the um, sitting outside your house, uh, all that stuff. All right. And then some, a lot of stuff that we don't, you know, you guys don't even know we've been through. All right. But the whole thing is that came with us pushing and not stopping and willing to pay a certain price for our for ourselves and our families in order to be able to bring it to get it right hopefully and then to give it to you guys because once again we don't know how to do commerce they will not give us a full outline book what they do is like the government they will compartment or military they will compartmentalize it yes so that nobody has the full picture unless you're up here okay all right that's it so all the low level functionaries um do not have all of the pieces nobody has all the pieces me sherry floyd not none of us have all the pieces we have a sliver in the areas that we've hit landmines <laughs> and live to tell the tales right. all right and i see somebody right. popped up eon um he's got lots of good information but even he's hit landmines okay mm -hmm. and some of his information you know like anybody else's should be vetted you know we don't talk about anybody in a negative way on this platform but we do say that all, everybody's information should be vetted for your own. Because at the end of the day, when they give you a call, they're like, hey, why did you fill this out this way? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, I, I don't know if this uh, chick, this lady, uh, this dude on YouTube had, had told me to fill it out this way. So I had just did it. Right. You know, like one of the first people watching my channel when I was explaining, you know, UCC 1-308, reserving your rights. Okay. Mm -hmm. Non-contracting. And he went in front of the judge and his judge was like, not, not that he didn't have it right. Most of them know what it is you're doing, but they want to see if you know what yes, you're doing. Exactly. And then the guy, he's like, well, what is this UCC 1-308? Oh, it means uh, without prejudice. Judge was like, okay, well, what does that mean to you? Oh, it means I, I, I respect everybody. I'm not, I'm not prejudiced about what Oh, my gosh. Oh, no. no. Oh, no. Got banked. Okay. You know? Right. Or, the, or the guy who um, early on also, when I told him about the ability to renounce, he renounces his citizenship. Well, the problem is when he renounced, he didn't specifically say just the 14th Amendment U.S. citizen side. So they wrote it up as he wanted to get rid of his uh, state citizen slash national side. And he was stateless. Now, there are ways to bounce back from that. But for the meantime, you got nobody. Nothing. Which is would be okay if you had your micronation and you were operating with your own constitution and sent out some treaties and whatever else. But so you have to vet the information, look it up for yourself, call them. And you know what? I've talked to many agencies, and let's just say this: I was told there are proper ways to do some things, and I've been told straight up, straight to my face, we're not going to tell you how to do that. Do you know how infuriating that is when the agency that you are supporting tells you, oh, yeah, that's a thing, but we're not going to tell you how to do it. And then you FOIA them and they go, well, yeah, there's some information, some truth there, but <laughs> we're not giving that to you. If you want to take it to a higher, you want to appeal that. So, but I would prefer to not do a process even if it was some other guru, whoever's like, oh, no, just do it. I did it because, one, how do you know he really did it? Right. 
And, then, right. and I ask them for references. I tell my, my clients that ask these questions. These people said they were successful. Ask them for references. And to this day, I haven't gotten any references. And a lot of these people, they do these things and they may get away with it. But when it becomes a thing where they're teaching people and it becomes exposed, then that's when it stops. Somebody had a, a, a question about sales tax, the national sales tax. I don't believe that that's a solution. That's just like having some lemonade and putting some pee in it. We, we have a system that should work correctly without the income tax. We worked correctly in the system without the income tax for eons before uh, uh, 1913 and the system that they have in place will work. Uh, another one says for a small business selling physical products, which business entities and business structure would you recommend? That is basically a one-on-one -on -one kind of thing because the kind of business that you have is based on you and your whole family situation and a whole bunch of other things. So it's not like one of those cookie cutter things. But what I do say is if you have any employees, you need to be a corporation. Let me ask you this. Uh, what year did you work for the IRS? 1988 to 1995. Okay. And let me ask you this. Now, when we submit I'm just, this hypothetical, mm -hmm. when we submit a 1090 or a 1040 a or a 1040 V or whatever, 1040 form to do mm -hmm. our taxes, now, because those are structured instruments, they go into a scanner. Am I not correct? I don't know where they go. Uh, that when they go in, they go to what's called a service center, some okay. big old warehouse that they're sent in. And uh -huh. back in the day, they used to process them differently. They probably go into a scanner now. But back then, they had people at these service centers processing them. And they gave these people a quota. And I kid you not, the people, couldn't keep up with the quota. So they started taking these tax returns and putting them up in the ceiling tiles. And at some point, the ceiling tiles got too heavy and all of these tax returns fell down out of the <laughs> ceiling tiles. So, yeah, so they couldn't process them. But I don't know what they do. I don't know how they go in right now. I just don't. I mean, that probably what what's happening most of the time now is people are processing their, their uh, those forms on some kind of a computer software, and then they're going in electronically. So they're being seen electronically. They're, they want you to do it that way, and they, they claim that they'll get you your refund back faster and all that, but what they're doing is you, you put the information in and you press send and it goes over. So yeah, somehow they're scanning. Okay, now let me ask you this. In your experience, do you, because I know they had data matching software as of 2013 and I've read that in their own documents. Mm -hmm. So it, I would think they would have it had had it prior to that. And I'm thinking that they probably have a quantum computing system with a scanner on it. That's reading all this. And whenever it comes with extracurricular material, mm -hmm. like uh, a sandwich, per se, mm -hmm. that it does get scanned, but it goes to somebody's desk to look at, as opposed to just getting naturally processed in the system. You're trying to make them a lot more sophisticated than they are, <laughs> it, it, and especially after COVID. You understand these people don't want to go back to work. They're still fighting to stay home right now. They're, yes. they're not supposed to be having your personal tax returns and stuff at their home. So it's a big fight. They're, they're having problems getting those people to come back to work. I, I would say in a, in a normal corporation, that would be the case. And I would say that the process that they have to get to that point where that, that extracurricular stuff is on somebody else's desk is a lot slower than what you think it is. Okay. Um, I had a uh, viewer whose daughter works at the Ogden, Utah facility. Mm -hmm. And uh, his report to me was, what do you mean they're going to hire 80 something thousand employees? They can't get the ones that we already have hired to come to work. And when they do <laughs> eventually show up to work, they don't want to work. And then they leave when they want to leave and just do whatever they want to do when they're here. <laughs> he is exactly right. Even when I was there, I was in line one time. I was, I was working on a, a special project and I was in a cafeteria in one of the downtown offices. And there were two people in front of me in the cafeteria and they were talking about, the, the day before and one of the guys was you know complaining about the fact that we used to get off work at 4 45 and he said that somebody called right at 4 30 and had, they had this question and he didn't feel like answering it and, and the other other person said well what did you do 
He said, I put them on hold and I went home. <laughs> Somebody asked about um, 61, internal, uh, 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 61. I was what? that guy. I was that guy. He was that guy. They hung up on you and, and you, James. They hung up on you. <laughs> they hung up on you. They're like, oh, no, Whatever. no, we can't, we can't help you, sir. Sorry, nope, hold on. Not today. Not, <laughs> not at 430 anyway. Let's see if I can get you a supervisor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So but, still on hold. Uh, section 61, somebody had a question, and that's Larkin Rose's uh uh baby right there. So there's there's gross income defined, taxable income defined, and net income defined, but income is not defined in the Internal Revenue Code. It's not defined in there. Income is corporate profits. So uh Larkin Rose, if you look him up, he has a whole lot of great information about um gross income defined. And it's basically letting us know that uh, our money is being misappropriated. Put it that way. How do you um, spell this last name? Rose, Larkin Rose, R-O-S-E. He has a YouTube channel, okay. but he wrote he wrote the, the, the paper on uh, Section 61 and, and what that is. And they got him too. He got prosecuted a little bit before I did, and they locked him up for a good while. But in, in his trial, I went to his trial and it's so interesting how they do these trials. They don't focus really on the issue of the taxes. They focus on other things like somebody had raided. They raided his house and Larkin, Larkin, L-A-R-K-E-N, Rose, Larkin Rose. They raided his house and supposedly found some some kitty, some baby, some kitty pictures on his. Mm. And, and, yeah, I, I don't know whether. Yeah. That, standard, you know, standard protocol, and, but and so yeah, and so there were, and so but they kept bringing that stuff up and bringing up the fact that he was a part of a, a, a state militia and things like that. And in my trial, they kept bringing up over and over and over again that I made six figures, and they made you know it was like they're making the jury hate me because I I make six figures and I did and I wanted to keep what I earned. So they always had some kind of an angle to make sure that the jury is uh, angry at you, biased. Um, yeah, and they're just there. There are a whole bunch of people that have yeah. been taught through propaganda that right. you know we have to pay. And as a matter of fact, there were jurors there. There were in my trial. There were um, people, supporters from all over the country. And one man ran to us and said that when the bailiff escorted the jury back into the jury room at one point, after you know when it was time for them to deliberate, <clears throat> he he put them all in there, and he before he closed the door. He put his head in the door and said, if I got to pay, she got to pay. And he closed the door. But there was nothing that we could do about that because there was his word against the person's word. But these are the kind of things that go on. Um, yeah, it's a uh, uh, bias to inflame the minds of the jurors. That's exactly what that is. Character assassination, right. which is not supposed in a criminal trial. It's not supposed to be brought up except for the second phase of the bifurcated trial. That's the punishment phase. That's when character can bring it up unless the defendant brings it up themselves. Right. right. They open the door and the barn doors open. Yeah. That's, that's how we found out some things in my original trial because right. it, it wasn't supposed to come up, but through some questioning on my side that wasn't supposed to happen and was unscripted, it did come up. So I understand exactly what you're saying. Some of the questions that are over in the, in the comments, I'm, I'm skipping them because I, I really don't know. Uh, I know somebody has Winston Stroud in there. I did look at some of his videos mm -hmm. back in the day, but a lot of this, a lot of the questions have to do with forms that I'm not um, familiar with. So Larkin Rose, L A R K E N R O S E. Larkin Rose wrote some books, and he has a, a channel, and he talks about gross income and the fact that you know, like you said earlier, they they compartmentalize things. They put a little bit of that in this section and a little bit of that in that section. So you can't really find out the truth. But if you go into section 27, which is like the excise tax section, it'll tell you every tax, what it's about, how much is due and why it's due, but not in, not in 26. They won't tell you that in 26 because it's something that they're not supposed to be taking from us. I mean, there's so much history behind how this thing came to be. And so much fraud up to this point. But the question is, you know, how, how hard do you want to fight? There are so many people that that's that have these sentiments. And this is 
what somebody told me. And other people have told me this in different words, but this is the most succinct way to say it. I don't care what the law says, Sherry. I care what they can do to me. And that's where a lot of people are, unfortunately. And and when we get to the point where we are letting the government, what, what is that saying? When the people are in charge, there's liberty. But when the government is charged, is in charge, there's tyranny. We're way past tyranny right now. We've got we've got international gangsters running our country. Um, I don't know what y'all call that thing in the in the in the White House, but Klaus <laughs> Schwab and those people are the ones that are making the decisions. And BlackRock and Vanguard and Lockheed Martin are the ones that are making the decisions in our country. Best believe our congressmen and senators are not running this country. They are not. No, we're, we're enslaved. Exactly. It doesn't. And see, that's the thing. It's like white, black. I don't care if you purple, blue with pink polka dots. It doesn't matter. And they got us sitting here doing all this fighting. And that's to keep us distracted away from the fact that they're building this big old sheeple corral around us. While we fight each other on this little minuscule stuff. That's what and I was called. Uh, never Sun, make a difference. Sun, Sun Tzu's The Art of War. Mm -hmm. if, if your opponent is larger in numbers than you, cause infighting amongst them, let them destroy themselves, and then you sweep in with products and services and, and uh, rebuild, and you look like the hero. And meanwhile, uh, you just slide a little you know, collar and uh, shackles on them. You know? Exactly. Shackles you, on your feet. Shackles on your arms, shackles on your mouth, that that mask thing, you know, I wasn't for that. Uh, I got people that still wear masks and it's like, do you realize that sucking in your own carbon dioxide or whatever? Anyway, that's another story. What <laughs> what is a con What country do you recommend as a second home if you have to leave the U.S.? I was trying to convince my family to find a small property together. It depends on your likes, your personality. I did a lot of research. I wanted to pick a stable country. I did not want to pick a country that was large. I did not want to go transatlantic because my family couldn't follow me easily there. The, the flights, uh, transatlantic flights are expensive. I chose uh, I chose Costa Rica for several reasons. So, uh, like I said earlier, you're not gonna freeze to death, you're not gonna starve to death, and you know the, the, the culture right there, I like the culture, but some somebody may wanna pick uh, Scotland or somewhere else you know, if, it, if, if you have family heritage if you can prove that your great great grandparents live in certain countries you can get citizenship there so it's a lot of research that you need to do to figure that out sherry do you know anything um about the secured party pro, uh, creditor process at all have you have they ever brought that up to you i didn't I think that was i have heard about it but i don't know i don't remember it's not something that was recent in my head but i did i have heard about that secure party pro i just don't know okay yeah. All right. Let's see. Um, uh, Sherry, did you have any questions for Floyd or for me? How about we flip the tables and, you know, you know, put you in the uh, in the seat of power? <laughs> yeah. So what have you guys been seeing concerning the sentiments of people that are out there? Let's say between 2000 and now that we're in 2023, have you seen any shifts either way in how people are handling their lives? on a small scale or a large scale. You want to feel that one, uh, Floor? Do you want me to go or you want to go first or do you want me to go? Um, I'm your age, uh, Sherry. So, you know, most of my contemporaries and peers are going into retirement or have since retired uh, or dying off or, you know, have some type of medical issue. Um, but for the most part, I haven't seen much of a change. I, you know, I purposely don't have a lot of close, close friends. You know, I have what I consider associates now. Uh, most of the friends are my old friends that I grew up with. I follow them on Facebook. So I kind of see what they do. So I haven't seen anything out of the norm. People are traveling again. I see them spending money. Um, I have a friend who barbecues like constantly so he is not let up on you know buying briskets and pork butts and <laughs> doing all that so uh as far as that end um yeah i'm also a professional stagehand 
um, as one of my, I guess, careers. I have several. Uh, in that industry, because it's in the entertainment industry, I do trade shows, uh, operas, ballets, theater, concerts, you know, anything in that ilk. Um, that has tapered off a lot. The um, wage scale has not increased with inflation. It's still stagnated, which is a issue. Um, so I see people working harder and longer for less and less and having to spend more to survive. And some people are, you know, they're right there riding that razor's edge every day, you know, whether they're going to make it or not. I have one guy that I work with and he's always struggling and he's losing a lot of his money to child support, half his paycheck. So, you know, do I get up and go to work and make $10 net after all of that? So I'm seeing that um, I, I live in a nice neighborhood that's in what I call the ghetto barrio that when I was a child, I used to hunt right here on this land where this house is. And I grew up about three miles away. Uh, when I moved here, the freeway ended like two miles back down towards uh, Houston. So I live in Houston. So I've watched this area grow. I've watched it flip from white middle class to uh, illegal aliens, blacks, Hispanics, um, and seen the white flight get out of Houston and head out to Cyprus and the Woodlands and Katy and those, those suburban areas. Uh, so in my own personal opinion, um, if you've been doing any of these processes or looking at crypto or any one thing to come save you and pull you out of this hole and get you out of the inflation. I don't see that. I see people drowning uh, that didn't continue as if nothing was going to happen and work and continue to do their normal things and earn that income and pay their bills. Uh, there is no get rich quick, get out of jail free card. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of study. It's a lot of research. And it's saying the right things at the right times to the right people. And that's where a lot of people are getting in trouble. Now, we were talking about the trendy new things. Uh, and I'll let James dive, uh, dive into his in a minute. But I wanted to bring up something that's going around that I'm sure you may or may not be familiar with. And that's the certified funds process. Have you seen or heard anything about this with a check and then a memo underneath? You have not? Okay. Huh? We can dive into that. But yeah, that's pretty much mine on uh, society as I see it. Okay. Um, I would definitely say that um, from the time I started to where we are now, um, there was a, a huge lull where it just kind of like kind of died out. Nobody was looking at it. It wasn't, um, not too many people knew about it. I had done started my channel somewhere in there. And, uh, you know, I, nobody was watching for anything. I was talking about business and a little bit about this and that. And then the pandemic happened and everybody who got, who was forced to stay home, you know, started kind of going, ah, oh, what's this? You know, oh, let me check it out. I'm bored, you know, and that was the launching really of my channel. And people were like, hey, I'm, everybody's sitting around, you know, and they're like, check this out, you know, and I'm I'm showing them where to find the information. Like, I'm not just going, oh, do all this. I'm like, nope, here's Black Laws Dictionary. Here's the words that they use. Here's all that. So um, and I didn't really think that, you know, um, there was a lot of people really watching, you know. So when I first started doing this, I, I you know, I, I did have my channel shut down. I did have all the, uh, you know, the normal things. And um, so, but like I said, once once the, the pandemic hit, you know, people were like, hey, let me look in this for myself. And they were getting the books. And so what I've noticed within the last year is that not so much my generation maybe either a hair after me and then skip that and then go to the younger you're 18 19 20 are they're a different breed and 
I'm watching videos of them on TikTok. I don't usually watch that, or I think I've got one. I rarely use it. Um, and they're quoting codes. They're quoting IRS codes. They're quoting federal codes. And I've had some of them go, oh, if you want more information, follow James C. Love. And I'm like, oh, whoa, 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 what? <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, So it's crazy that That's cool. we're able to bridge these generations. And these young people are like, we want the remedy. We want that. We're, we're, you know what? You guys passed the torch and uh, we got this. We're, you know, we're going to run with this. So when somebody asked earlier, you know, I think we're doomed. I don't think we're doomed. Not at all. As a matter of fact, I will go on a limb and say that if you, if you have a faith, okay, so as education, all right, not to offend anybody, but I will say as a faith, I think that the universe is, whether you want to call it God or this or that, whatever you believe in is in control. And I think they've got a plan and I think everything is going according to that plan. And I think that at least in this, we'll just say reality, um, that it will be in either the next or the generation after that we will see tremendous change. But right now I like to call this, we are on the edge of the razor blade where we're taking our bumps and bruises and we're holding the gate open for those who want to come. Those who want to, you know, uh, stay in there can stay in there. Maybe they'll come later. But as I tell people in this story, not everybody is meant to go where you're going. OK, there's going to be merchants on merchants on the side of the road. There's got to be farmers. There's got to be the, the jester, whatever you want to call it. And there's only going to be certain people that are going to be who are going to resonate and go to the to castle and do what they got to do. Maybe those other characters will change in the future. Maybe not. So we just have to do our part and let the story play out. And much like in the old Kung Fu movies, um, you've never seen the masters walking door to door to find students. The master does what they do where they're at and the students come to them. All right, it's an it's this age old story. So the same thing with other people. I tell people, don't try to bring people, don't try to force them into this. Right. All right. If they were, if and when they're ready, they will come. Exactly. Exactly. So I, I see that. I see that same thing. I see that um, these young people know that social security is not going to be there for them. They see themselves stuck in a system with a job that's taking so much of their money out to pay for all of the older people. And they don't want that. I see a lot of the younger people leaving the country and, and they're starting out as digital nomads, but then they end up getting residency and eventually citizenship in a place that is more suitable for what they want to do in their lives. Less expensive to live, zero or very little tax and more freedom to be themselves. That's what I see. I saw a question about Erwin Schiff. What happened to Erwin? Erwin was, he wrote the book, the, the little yellow book, uh, not to pay the income tax that got me started on my journey. Uh, they, they found, and, and he has a book called The Federal Mafia. Erwin was serious and Erwin was loud and Erwin was in their face and they didn't like Erwin. So they ended up throwing Erwin in jail. And when he got sick, and they tried to get him home, at least to see his family. They kept him locked up and he died strapped to a gurney with 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 uh, handcuffs on and they didn't let him go home. So uh, they hated Irwin, but Irwin, Irwin was a champion. Um, another thing that I saw, um, how will the CIA fund all of its curvy, uh, cur covert operations in the <laughs> cashless society? Well, they're using all the cash that's disappeared. <laughs> You know, every year you hear about the the the, the government being audited and in, in, in trillions of dollars being d disappeared. Well, where is that trillions of dollars? That's the question. Uh, I'm still a U.S. citizen and I signed an agreement with the IRS for an offering compromise. I owe 24K, settled on 3900 Can I get out of the agreement before I need to make that payment in four months? <laughs> I actually... Uh, <laughs> if you had 24 and it's 39 Pay it. I pay it and pay then it. exit. I'll, I'll tell you my story. So when I came home from prison, 
they had me down for $385,000 because I'd made decent money. I was a six-figure earner before prison also. And $385,000, and I said, how dare they? I just spent three years in jail. I've already paid the price for this. How, how, how do they drown me and then get me out of the water and then hang me? So I, I had a, a great attorney on that part, um, the McPherson group. Mac McPherson was a Green Beret. And when he came back from the war, he said he needed something to fight. So he, he chose the IRS. And their, their website is actually beatirs.com. Anyway, long story short, he told me to go ahead and file the taxes. And I was really reluctant to file the taxes. And I filed them. And that $385,000 went down to 100 and some odd thousand dollars because they had a 75% fraud penalty and they still considered me a fraudster. But Mac in those took that case, and I ended up settling for a thousand dollars. So I, wow. you know, I said that you know now that cloud isn't over my head anymore, then I can operate the way I need to operate. Um, one of the other things that I saw a question that made me remember when I was at trial, what the the government's first three exhibits, their first three exhibits against me, were my slave surveillance number, the SSN card. Number two was my driver's license. And number three was my bank signature card. That means something. Uh, uh -huh. Another thing is something about trust. I do have trust. I believe in trust. That's how the wealthy operate. They have multiple trust. They have blind trust and they make a whole bunch of money. It goes, flows into the trust that doesn't belong to them. So it doesn't go into their name. So trust is a great way to operate inside or outside the system. There you go. I yeah. do believe in being a national. I do believe in being a private person. Um, some sometimes the, the tentacles are deep and it's hard to go backwards. For example, when I went away, my children, their slave surveillance numbers had been turned back in. And there were some colleges that my son applied for that they would not even take his application with zero, zero, zeros on it. Um, they, you know, you have to pick your battles and you know that was something that we just you know said we don't want we, we don't want you if, if you want that number i've been in doctor's offices before where i was paying straight cash and they said we, when we need your social security number no you don't need it because i'm not filing an insurance claim i'm paying cash well the doctor said he still needs your ask the doctor why he's trying to get my social security number when i'm paying cash he just said they need it or he's not going to serve you what did i do i walked out the door so it just depends on, you know, how far you want to take what you're doing. And yes, I believe in being a national and you, I don't know. And, and you guys will know the questions that come up about that. When, when people talk to me about it, well, you know, am I still going to be able to travel? Am I still going to have something like a passport or a passport or whatever? So those are questions that people ask. I deal with the churches a lot and the churches are 501c3, which is a danger, which is something that you shouldn't be. You should not be a 501c3 or incorporated because in that case, you put the government above God and everything. So it's like, how do you get out of that? That's the same question. How do I get out of the 501c3 so that I can speak my mind? Well, they're, you know, it's it's not an easy road and they make it very hard. So you you have to come out of your comfort zone. One of my, my one of my statements is life begins at the end of your comfort zone. And if you're comfortable, just like you said earlier, James, you, you, you're just going to have to. You gotta have to stay comfortable in in your circle of sameness to understand what a circle is. When you're in your circumstances, when you're standing in a circle. So when people say I'm okay under the circumstances, you're sitting that you're standing there in a circle, made of your made of your own liking or of your own decisions. So to come out of your circumstances and come out of your comfort zone, it's gonna take work. You gotta get off your kabunkum. You can't sit there like that. Yeah. Now, I noticed one of the things that they're doing now with the uh, passport process, which was pretty much uh, my claim to fame, how I got here is by breaking down the whole entire passport process and providing, um, you know, the proper way to do everything uh, for somebody who does it private. So once again, wasn't for that, I probably wouldn't be here. But one of the things that they're doing now um, and they've made modifications per my request. So thank you guys for that. Appreciate you. Mm -hmm um is that um they now don't require you to put your social on there if in fact you feel that you were never issued one you can write an affidavit 
and have it notarized and then use all zeros. Now, back in the day, it was um, uh, it, it differed between what they said on the website versus the actual file. The website said you don't have to put it on there. We can't force you to do that. And then the file itself said under these codes that you have to. But we've seen the rulings on it that that is optional because not everybody <clears throat> is issued one. All right. So the legalities of it is, well, educational information only. Uh, I wasn't at the time issued one. Uh, my parents were. You know, so I did not take possession of that. You know, that was then provided to me later on, but my signature was never on there. So I am in just lieu of one. <laughs> right. So uh, but so they have whatever they did in the little back offices. So as long as if you don't want to do it that way by actually putting it on there, you can uh, you put all zeros and then have that affidavit on in there for that particular process. Now, you probably will still get some pushback because that's just what it is. Um, but once again, you have to be willing to stand your ground yes. uh, and your conviction. So from what I've heard through some friends who've got some friends, um, they've definitely lightened up with some of these things. So I always told people there are the entire government is not bad. There are sections that are a little sketch, but there are a number of either individuals or sections that actually want this information out and they want us to be successful, but they want us to do it the proper way. Now that to me is almost like an oxymoron because no one's issuing a proper way because you got the good ones over here. Like, I hope they figure this out, but we can't put a book out because that's well, you know, huh. and these guys are like, Oh, these guys are figuring out. What do you think we're going to do about that? I don't know. Let's try to slow them down a little bit, <laughs> you know, so that's really what's going on in almost all of that, you know, but it's pick and choose your battles, um, have backup plans, have at least something designed to protect you in case of, you know, you know, SHTF, you know, when stuff hits the fan or, you know, if and, if and or when. And, you know, govern yourselves as non-belligerents, not combatants, and keep in mind that this is all business. So what we have to do in this uh, maritime world of, uh, you know, commerce is take it one step at a time, break it down piece by piece, ask all the questions, and then make a decision. But, yes, it's no secret that they do have uh, tax-exempt um, things that you can apply for. You know, so if that's what you want to do, then you operate yourself that way. Right. right. Otherwise, if you keep using what you have from from my from my my understanding, and haven't been on the phone with them for a long time, is that if you're using something that is considered taxable, it's taxable, and you can have deductions. You can donate, like someone was saying, donate all of it to a tax exempt thing that maybe you your private side owns or whatever, but. If something is stamped and labeled taxable in their jurisdiction that they're allowed to tax, which is your public side, then you got to pay them their taxes. That's just it. Like I tell everybody else, if I was working, not to sound like them, not not to be on their side, but if someone's selling, um, you know, barbecue and lemonade in my backyard, I'm gonna want my cut. Right. If you're wearing Bad Wolf uh, stuff on, and you're standing on Bad Wolf territory at the time by use of the zip code. <clears throat> then guess what? I want my cut. And everybody else here would want their cut too because that's what you signed up for. Now, that can be changed if you decide to. Now, are they worried about the, what is it, probably less than or right around 1% of people who even know this information? No. But, you know, you start getting up to 10%. Now you're, now you're going to start to, you know, and they're going to start to kind of, you know, bat their eyes a little bit more over there, you know? So having things in place and operating correctly is the best way to go. But to just be like, yeah, I'm done. Well, from their perspective, they, there's a contract in place. They're, to, from my understanding, mm -hmm. they're a PMA, a private membership association, and they want their cut. And if you don't want to be a part of that, then you need to renegotiate the terms of your contract or create a new contract 
and stop using the one that you're using. As always, vet your own information. This is just education and entertainment. Right. So if you're not entertained, I don't know why you're here. But yeah. according to the 701 people watching right now, you guys are. So don't forget to hit that. Yep. That's first of all, that's a record here. So thank you guys. Great. Very <laughs> ambitious, Floyd. Thank you for that. Great. Um, you're welcome. You're everybody welcome. hit that oh, bell, like, and subscribe. <laughs> And uh, let's let's keep going. So, Sherry, yeah, feel free to ask more questions. Floyd, okay. what um, do self-employed do if they're classified as a sole proprietor and taxed on labor as income? Um, sole proprietor, you can write off everything but the kitchen sink. You can get your income down to just about zero because if you have a business, then your cell phone is deductible, your internet is deductible, your mileage is deductible, everything's deductible. That's just the business code. So if you're a sole proprietor and you get a 1099 or something like that, just write off, you know, your trips and all of that. I saw another question that isn't your uh if you rent a room to yourself, isn't yeah, that uh a business use of home. If you have a if you have a like I'm right now I'm in my office in my home. I write off part of my mortgage, part of the real estate taxes, part of the uh, utilities, my lawn care, my security, all that. I, mean, I write off everything. I mean, you know, the the, the IRS says in, in Internal Revenue Code Section 162, all ordinary and necessary business expenses are deductible. Ordinary is, is common and, um, you know, appropriate. And what that means is that if it's appropriate for your business, you can write it off. A 1994 tax court case where a lady named Cindy Hess wrote off a breast enlargement and the IRS just laughed until they fell out because she thought she was going to get away with writing off a breast enlargement. So they <laughs> took her to tax, she took it to tax court. She got a lawyer. She took it to tax court and Cindy Hess won her case. She was uh, allowed to write off her breast enlargement because Cindy Hess, better known as Chesty Love, was a pole dancer. I and was she, just going to ask that question. Lawyer. I was trying to find a way yeah. to <laughs> Yeah, she had to keep up with the competition. So that was ordinary and necessary. So if Cindy Hess, better known as Chessie Love, can write off a breast enlargement, you know, nobody should be scared to write off their business deductions. Um, a small business drop shipping with business entities. Which business entity and business structure? Again, that's that's a question that would have to have a lot of other questions behind it. You know, there's a, there's a sole proprietorship. There's partnerships. There's S Corp, there's C Corp. Uh, LLC is not really a business type when it comes down to taxes. If you're a sole proprietor and you get LLC behind your name, if you're one person that's an LLC, you're a sole proprietor. If you're mm -hmm. two or more people and you're an LLC, you're still a partnership. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to, as an LLC, you have to apply to be a corporation. So there's a lot behind that. And it, that's like an individual thing that you, that you want to ask. Um, to someone, so. My choice. There's a lot of people asking about, you know, pretty much three standard forms that everybody bandies about. And that's the uh, the Form 56, the appointment of fiduciary, and the 3949A and 2848. So what can you tell us about any of those, if you can? You know, I usually, I don't remember numbers. I, I think the 2848 sounds like a familiar form. I have to know the name of them. Power of attorney. Okay. Yeah, that's that was why I remember it. Uh, you know, you know, we use power of attorneys in the IRS, the, the CPAs and all of those who wanted to represent somebody. The other forms, I'm not sure what they are okay. because there's so many there's so many numbers. You just get to know you forget about the numbers and you figure out what the names of the forms are. OK, 3949A is uh, the report of uh, fraud, basically. to mm, That's what that was. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Basically snitching on somebody. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about that. So yeah. when I was an IRS agent, they put me in charge of something that was loosely called the preacher project. So they decided they wanted they they wanted the churches churches bring a lot of money, and they were angry about that that the church didn't have to pay tax on it. So they decided to go in the back door and start auditing a whole bunch of ministers. And there's a whole bunch of ministers out there that really are doing a bunch of crazy stuff. But in Georgia, you know, I was auditing ministers for the last two and a half years of my career. And when you when you rat on somebody, which which most of these pastors, I think for them, all of them, the ones that I had to audit, they the information came from somebody that ratted on them, either on the 1-800 number or in a letter. 
But when you rat on somebody, you can get up to a 30 percent um, reward for that. You can get up to 30 percent. So if you got a neighbor that you see doing something and the neighbor's ticking you off because their dog keeps pooping in your yard, you can turn them in and whatever they get out of that neighbor, you get 30 percent. Hey, uh, IRS. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> Not this time, anyway. We got some new best friends. Yes, yes, <laughs> right? yes, yes. Um, do I need? Do you, okay, go ahead. Uh, what do you know about the uh, Social Security eighty nine form? And that is another power of attorney form. Are you familiar with that one? Not at all. Okay. Not at all. No. Yeah, as a revenue agent, my job was to audit the tax returns. And as a private business person, what I've been doing more so is number one, helping people start home based businesses, and number two, helping people that are being audited. So, like a lady called me, she was in tears. She said, I just got back from the doctor. Doctor says I have MS. And then when I went to the mm -hmm. mailbox, I have an audit letter in the mail. And that just made me angry. She told me her about her business and that she didn't keep records the way she should have. She had all these debit cards. You know, her, her, her bank account had all these uh, transactions and debit cards. They don't like that. They want some receipts. So I told her exactly what to do. Her and husband worked on it, worked on it, and she ended up getting a refund from them. So I do that. And then when people say, you know, the IRS said I owe $100,000, then I help them uh, try to get rid of that. I've actually helped people get rid of those numbers uh, or at least get them reduced. But all this other extra stuff, I haven't really had a lot of experience with, except for people calling me after they've done something. Mm, okay. Can I see a question? Do I need an LLC or other entity to open my own business? No, you can just open your business under your own name. You don't have to register with the Secretary of State. You don't necessarily even have to go to your county, except for here in Georgia, they want you to register a business so they can get money. Even if I don't have clients coming in my house, they still want money from it. But, you know, you can stay private. I stay private by having my larger companies not registered in Georgia. So I have companies in Wyoming and in uh, New Mexico. I don't want a, a, a footprint for some of my companies in Georgia, and I don't have that. And I was able to get bank accounts here in Georgia without having a footprint in Georgia. Now, some banks wouldn't let me do it. I found a way to do that. So if you look up cer certain companies that I have or if you try to look me up, you, you won't find those companies. There are ways to operate privately within the system also. Um, on that, one of the things that we've talked about, so I know my viewers know about this, um, is uh, have you heard of the 98 number or the uh, foreign trust number? No, I could have, but it wasn't something okay. that I've done studied on. Somebody might have said something about it, but I haven't done any research on that. Okay. All right. So we did a video on that as education. Okay. And um, it is the fact that if you're, wherever you're located, if your parent company is located in outside of the zip code, United, United States Corporation, mm -hmm. and yet you are here operating your United States uh, events, um, the IRS will issue you a 98 number. This number is considered to be tax-free because you have no loyalty to the United States Corporation. Mm -hmm. As long as you, know, you are able to receive mail here while you are here doing business. Now, the way it goes is that uh, you have to file a claim or have something reported on you within five years. Otherwise, it will, you know, dissolve. So most of my viewers know of this information. Um, so that's something that was provided to me from the IRS. Um, so anybody, if that fits your particular dynamics, you can utilize that information. We already, we've already made a video on that. There's a number you can call. Um, and uh, yeah, so there's lots of ways to operate in the private or um you know semi-private you just need to do your research and by that not only do i mean you know come across the information but vet the information for yourself i will definitely be getting back with you on that because that sounds like something i need to be involved with yep 
Yeah, we've uh, we've uh, assisted people who that situation uh, was uh, you know most suited for. So someone says that my my son just started a new job. They are asking for a copy of his social security card. That's very strange that they would literally want a copy of it. Um, I don't know why, but you know, a lot of times depending on their depending on their age, they don't have that anymore. So uh, I would should he ask for a specific form? The only thing I can think of is to get in touch with the Social Security Administration and ask them how we could get a copy of it. IRS is being dismantled. I wouldn't hold my breath. Every time they put that that bill, Congress, the 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 House usually every so often will put a bill through to get rid of the IRS, and the Senate never ever ever passes it. So I'm not holding my breath on that. Yeah, there probably will be a reform at some point in time. Let's just say theoretically, if they ever hit a critical mass. But uh, till then, there's way too much money being generated and a lot of hands that uh, we'll just say you might know or think that aren't, aren't getting paid are getting a little chicken scratch to make sure that they're they've got a little leeway. We'll just say remember every everything. Um, it's a spider web, if you want to call it that. And um, it's all connected, you know, so. Yes. Yes. They don't want to give up their power. So that's just they don't want to give up the money that they're getting from us and they don't want to give up the power. So we need to start taking back control of our own resources. And what I tried to do is cut the head off the beast. So I went head on and challenged the beast and said, uh, this is my money. You're not getting my money. So I literally took a sword and tried to cut off the beast's head. Well, what I'm teaching people to do now is starve the beast. Same result. It's, it'll take longer. But if you're holding on, if you're doing the strategies that are going to keep the resources in your own pocket, then eventually the beast is going to get starved. I don't know where it's going to get, you know, its resources from, but it's going to get starved. Is Sherry or from under the rug? Is Sherry? I can't. Um, they're not bothering me if that's what you mean. Um, they haven't. You know, it, besides setting, shutting down my Facebook page, I haven't been bothered. Um, you know, the, the, the biggest the biggest thing is is that it's business, and we have to learn how to do commerce. I can say it a thousand times, even with the DMV. Um, you know, I've had my battles there with the state, with the you know, all of them across. If like Sherry said, it's not about. See, and I'll be honest with you, not to hurt anybody's feelings. I have no problem with them being here. There's other companies, you know, Asian and this and that that are here. Muslims are got their own police force, whatever. It's business. Let's make money. Hurrah. But my thing is, is that they have gotten bloated and definitely some overstepping from my perspective. Yeah. But they're doing business. And so the problem is, is not enough people know that there are alternative options and how you can do business. Right. And that if we want to starve the beast, um, let's just say get them more in, in the athletic build or <laughs> instead of fat. Um, Job. We have to start. We have to, start uh, we have to stop giving tributes. Right. And operate. Right. So, like I said, I've got my private side tax exempt stuff over here, and I've got the public stuff straw man, 14th Amendment taxpayer over here. And when I elect to use that for things, that I normally want to do. Yeah, no problem. I'll toss the, the baby a bottle. No, here you go. But at the same time, I do this stuff over here. Right. So, but that's me knowing how to move and play their game. Okay. When There's you, when you want to, and when it's, when it's necessary, you know, what, which, which uh, area to move in when it's right. necessary. Exactly. Right. Right. Now everybody is just, as I like to say, grabbing ankles and, you know, giving, giving them what they want. You know, and then yet you're complaining about it, but you're not doing anything about it. You know, so this is part of the education that if you guys want to move differently, then um, you've got some options. And uh, let's see, Zillionaire says, um, please hit the like button and thank you. So uh, we, we appreciate you yeah. and everybody get those likes up. Now, one of the things I just want to take two minutes, uh, Sherry, to uh, 
once again, give everybody your info across the map where they can find you, support you, subscribe to you. And then we'll have Floyd do the same thing. Once Floyd's done, then it's right back on you, Sherry. And, and uh, you know, the floor is yours. Okay. So my website for the general population is wakethepeople.com. I deal with churches a lot in their finances. That's sherrypeeljackson.com. My YouTube channel is Sherry Peel Jackson or Dr. Sherry Peel Jackson, one of those. And my Facebook is Sherry Peel Jackson and my Instagram, which I don't know how to use that well, is Sherry <laughs> Peel Jackson. So um, my email is Sherry Peel Jackson at gmail.com. I'm just, you know, the that's that's what it is. So the you know my, I try, I'm going to try to at least get one video up on my YouTube channel per month now until I finish these classes. I've actually just shut it down and uh, have been concentrating on getting these classes done because I know people need this information. But yeah, that's how to contact me. All right. All right. Well, thank you for that. I am Fearless Floyd. I host a show called The Fearless Floyd Show on all platforms, Rumble, BitChute, YouTube, Telegram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitch, and on and on and on. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to put those placeholders in place to protect your entity, correct? Yes, yes, so yes. That's basically what I've done. Uh, if you want to reach me, you can reach me at e, uh, fearlessfloydshow at yahoo.com. Uh, I'm on the fearlessfloydshow.com. It's my website. Uh, you can try to reach me on Telegram. I'm a very, very, very busy guy. I want to thank James for inviting me on the show. I want to thank uh, his guest, Sherry, for her knowledge and her experience and her time to come on here and share everything with us. Uh, awesome. Yeah, I'd love to have you come on my show and uh, sometime and, you know, we can kick it and talk about some more and promote yourself because uh, I I'm really interested in uh, your curriculum that you're putting together yeah. and what yeah. that looks like and, and how far that's going to expand the knowledge and the horizon of our audience. So yeah, a good way to go, James. Great show. Thank you for doing this. Yeah. I, I don't know how to post that information in here. Somebody asked me to post oh. it and to contact him. I don't know what to do, but the the course that I'm doing is like it's going to help people that don't know how to manage finances very well to get to the point where they're not only mind, um, managing their finances, but they're working towards being wealthy. That's that's what I want. That's what I want for everybody. Um, the let's see, uh, there was another question. I yeah, so that was it. I can't. I don't know how to post. Okay. The, the other thing that I wanted to talk yeah. about is I, I have a lot of contacts that are are or were high up in government, and the way they're trying to bring this system down uh, started rapidly moving forward with the pandemic, first of all. So I would, I would say to your listeners, yes, pay attention to these things, but also pay attention to making sure that you have sufficient resources just in case things start happening in your area. Because I don't have a good feeling about what's going on right now with all of the 20 plus food processing plants that have burned down. And I don't have a good feeling about what happened in Palestine, Ohio with that train and some other stuff that's going on and putting together the pieces of what's going on. We need to be very vigilant and aware of our surroundings and making sure that we are paying attention. I'm, I'm trying to hope I'm hopefully letting you all read between the lines, but things are happening and you want to, you want to make sure that you are able to sustain yourself just in case they just jump off with some more foolishness that is a little bit beyond what they did with the pandemic. That's very important. It's all of, all of what we're doing here is important, but, 
right now, some of our focus needs to be on if something happens, am I going to be able to survive, you know, two days, two weeks, two months? Let me let me hear what you all have to say about that. All right, we uh, we froze for a little bit there, but I think we're we're back. Uh oh, did I freeze? Yeah, you came in a little garbled, uh, just towards yeah. the end there, but oh. we heard most of it. It uh, it does that sometimes, you know. Okay. okay. <laughs> you know, sometimes in I don't know words that are you know key are said, uh, you know. The, yeah, because I hardwire when I get on these shows. I am hardwired. Yeah. Oh, so that, well, that that was that's it, a flag right there. It tends to happen more yeah. so um you know. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> we I understand. we can't blame Zoom well, on this. Uh, one. All right. Yeah. Um <laughs> <laughs> moving right along. <laughs> um let's see here. All right. So yeah, feel free to uh anything else you know you want to share like We'll probably run it for, um, are you guys good for like maybe another 15 minutes, something like that? Mm -hmm. I'm good. So here's a question. Can CDL trucking owner operator ever be free from the system? Does one have to find another means of income to be truly free? Oh, it depends on what your definition of free is. I think that people that are not receiving any of those forms those affidavits that you received taxable income like the w2 the 1099s the k1s and all those if you don't receive any of those at all then your transcript at the irs is gonna be blank so that's that's a semblance of freedom but if you are receiving those forms then uh, outside of the, the the outside of the w2 if you're receiving a w2 you're just you know you're right where they want you you're the low-hanging fruit they don't have to worry about you because, you know, they've got the corporation or whoever you're working for in cahoots with them. But if you are if you're breaking out of that and you're working for yourself and even if you get a 1099 at the end of the year, you still have the ability to write off everything but the kitchen sink. So freedom to me will be getting out of here, getting out of Dodge and being able to live off the grid in a nice place that's, that, that's going to have nutrient dense food and uh, a place that I can have peace. I'm looking for more questions. Somebody's asking about the master file. Now in my research, when I went to the IRS here locally in Houston and presented them my instruments to be filed into my master file, mm -hmm. She was like, well, I see you already filed this into the Social Security Administration. I was like, yes, ma'am. She goes, well, if you filed it there, we already have it. Because once it's filed in one department or agency or bureau, that it's filed in all of them. Yeah, yeah. Is that a correct statement? They they, yeah, they, they do work together. The states work together with the federal and the Social Security Administration. But if you want to file something, if you want to file something that's different from what they have, then, you know, you have to find a way around that. A lot of times I think I've watched a couple of your shows, James, and you were talking about, um, well, certain things that you tried to file. They didn't want to file them in the courthouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you know, what we did with some other things was we just went to another jurisdiction. You know, we went to another county and did it mm -hmm. to get our things filed. But it is hard, just like you said, um, Floyd, it, it's hard to get stuff done. And if you want to present this paperwork, a lot of times they don't want to take it. But. Mm -hmm. You find a way to file it somewhere that's legitimate and you have your paperwork filed. Um, Sherry, how do you get a bank account without a slave surveillance number? Uh, since they enacted the Patriot Act after after that thing that was 9-11, I don't think you can get one without a slave surveillance number. What you can do is form a group of people that you trust and start a business and have them out front. If you don't want to be the one out front, let them use their slave surveillance number and their information if that's somebody that you trust. I will add on to that by saying that um, there are a handful of banks that will, yes, allow you to have a business only, EIN only. Um, and 
educational information purposes only. Um, the 98 number happens to be a business number. Excellent. Do I recommend the PMA? It, it's good for certain things. If it's used properly, yes. Um, if there's some other ways there, I've seen PMA be used for something that they don't want it to be used for. And I don't know how long it's going to be before they start cracking down. They crack down on stuff that's legitimate just because they don't want us to succeed. You got to remember that. I'm not saying any of this is wrong. I'm saying that if they don't want it to succeed, they're going to find a way to crack down on it. I've seen people legit legitimately file paperwork and become people that weren't U.S. citizens. I've seen them dragged out of their houses and all that. And it's just it's we need to stand up as a people. We need to get a backbone again. I mean, there was a revolution that happened and I'm not know that I'm not advocating violence. But what is it going to take for us to assert our rights and say that we are human beings that are not going to be at the behest of people like a Nancy Pelosi or a Klaus Schwab or that 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 his assistant Harari whatever his name is that said that we're useless eaters and that AI is going to take over. You know, that's Kiss insulting me. to me. That's insulting and that's not who I am. And, you know, the more they say stuff like that, and the more they do <laughs> crazy things and try to take our Second Amendment rights away, the more you're going to tick some people off and they're going to have some solutions for you. One of the things I try to get my people to uh, understand is that <clears throat> the public side is for doing business in the public and the private is for doing business in the private. And really, those are to never mix. But a lot of people don't even know that they have that private side. Right. And so because once again, we were all groomed into their public corporate, um, you know, uh, venues, um, getting them to even understand that they have the right to operate completely in the private. Right. You know, so that's and, and thankful to the forefathers. Uh, for the Constitution of the United States of America, because without that, we would be cannon fodder. <laughs> so, because there are different jurisdictions. I mean, you have to figure out, once again, how to do commerce. Everything that everyone's asking, there's a way to do it. Um, there's bank accounts overseas that you can acquire. There are, there's everything you want to do, there's a way to do it. You just have to want want it and do the research. And if you know, if not, then find somebody who has already done it and get the answers from them. But you should still vet the information because you're never going to learn something better than when you're you got boots on the ground, you know, BOTG, and you're and you do it for yourself. Because then you're gonna know every avenue down that alley. Right. You know, a lot of people watch my stuff and they want to shortcut the processes or and and, and here's one thing I said I was gonna say earlier. For the love of God, people, for the love of God, do not ask us about other people's processes. All right. Every person, guru, shaman, whatever you want to call them, one of the things that we absolutely hate. Well, hey, did you watch what so and so said about you? Or they don't, they said use this form instead of that one, that we don't, we don't know how they're moving. Sometimes we 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 do know the process, but the methodology, methodology behind it is their brainchild and they're coming up with a reason and why this should work. But one of the things I will say, um, you know, about uh, Felix Floyd's, uh, you know, cousin uh, is that, you know, you, you need to be more observant. Kind of like what Sherry was saying, you know, if, if someone's telling you, you can buy uh, a yacht on the ocean for a million dollars with this, this, or this, and just access this, and they don't look like they got a yacht. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I'm from the show me state, I guess. You know, I grew up on the streets and in a nicer area. So I was hood and then it was nice. So I learned to navigate in both. And what that taught me is that people lie everywhere. Right. People will do whatever it takes to get a couple of clicks on there to make that income. And then they'll fade away, you know, or yeah. they've got nothing to show for it, you know. And at the same time, be weary of people who have too much to show. Okay. 
somebody said when stacks of money behind them and a car or whatever else, all that can be rented, all that can be bought. You can go on Amazon right now and buy fifty thousand dollars in Hollywood uh, fake cash and put it behind you for twenty bucks. Right. You know what I mean? have to be careful about that. It, there's yeah, so right. much out there, so much out there, and there's so much fake stuff out there. You just you have to be careful about who you know, you you are teaching certain things for people to operate in the private. I concentrate more on people who have decided that they're going to be a little bit more in the system because you know that's the majority of people. Right. So yeah. I but I feel like what you're doing is is really helping people cut the head off the beast more so in a in a in a great way by dotting their eyes and crossing their T's. And I'm I'm teaching people how to starve the beast. But either way, the beast has got to go down. It's got to go down. Uh, somebody said, "I thought we were limited with what a sole proprietor can deduct." Not really. <laughs> no, yeah, they, there are accountants out there that are afraid to be afraid for the tax returns that they prepare to be audited. So they would rather leave deductions off your tax return uh, to save them for later uh, in fear of being audited. So a lot of people out there are um, are afraid of the IRS. They're just afraid. So um, does oh, eBay yeah. report to the IRS? You know, I'm not sure about e eBay, but I'm pretty sure that starting next year, all of them, everywhere you make money is going to have to, this is, this is becoming like a dystopian situation like China. I saw an, um, a video the other day where somebody went into one of the public restrooms and they had to use their uh, social credit score to let the toilet paper come out. Oh, no. <laughs> they went, the toilet paper literally came out after they put their social credit score thing up there. So. Uh, what, 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 one ply and three sheets? <laughs> it, was like, it was one ply and three about- sheet rule. Really, it really was. And so we don't want to be in that. Uh, situation the creature from Jekyll Island, yeah. The, the creature Ed Griffin has a Ed Griffin, which is the person that made the book The Creature from Jekyll Island. He has mm -hmm. a Red Peel Expo, um, maybe every year or so. And I just spoke at the Red Peel Expo in November. But people are becoming aware of what's going on. It's up to you and your family what you do, what methods you choose. But please choose a method to get you know to get uh to get out of the matrix, to get out of the sheeple corral, because I, I don't want to be a sheeple. I mean, I'm, I've been through too much in my life. And right now, um, some of you younger people might want to take a different route. Like I said, I'm 60 now and I want to take, you know, I want to get some time to, to have some peace, but I still want to be teaching at the same time. So uh, I support you, um, Floyd. I support you, John, uh, James, on whatever you're doing to make sure that the people get their relief from the government. You know, these governments don't have our best interests at heart. None of these governments do. So we need to find our own way to figure out what we're going to do to to protect ourselves and our family from what they're what they have planned, because their plans are dastardly. Yeah, it, it's um, it's. There are. Sections, once again, compartmentalization. You know, left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. There are definitely key aspects um, that are doing their jobs, working hard to the best of their knowledge with what they're given. And then, but yet there are puppet masters in control of sections, we'll just say, that have, don't have our interest, but their own in, in, uh, at, you know, in mind. So for us, it is... What, what did Bruce Lee say, which is one of my most favorite uh, philosophers? Bruce Lee, if you guys didn't know, actually was a philosopher. He got a, philo a major in philosophy other than just, you know, actually kicking pe people's butt. But one of his things was is the art of fighting without fighting. Right. There is a way to fight without necessarily being physical. And so that's kind of what we all we share is like, you know, you don't have to necessarily run down there and do anything. We don't condone anybody doing anything physical or dangerous, whatever. Not not on this show. It's not how we do it. But we fight quietly by going, OK, I'm just going to not feed you as much. And now I know I can get a tax exempt 508 C1A or an un, un, unincorporated association or a private trust or put my whatever over here. There's lots of ways to get it done. And like I said, I. Like I said before, with the whole Kung Fu master thing, you don't have to bring everybody with you. Do what you're going to do. And if someone, when people start seeing how you move, 
give them two minutes to say, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I have a, a foreign trust. Yeah, and I don't have nothing in my legal name. What do you mean? No, I, everything is in my given name or my, my uh, you know, my trust or my micronation or whatever. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's why, you know. So that's the whole thing. Like I said, we're not here to be belligerents or combatants. It's all, like I said, I don't, you, you can't take it personal. It's business. Um, but you definitely will feel that it's personal when they're, you know, you know, knocking at your door or whatever else. So art of fighting without fighting. This is how we have to do it. And if they overstep, there are some checks and balances we can, we can use. Um, but you know, you guys have to learn this information, um, because we're only going to be doing this for so long. And then you guys are going to have to pick up the torch. Okay. Right. And the, and we don't have all of the pieces, but what we're giving you is our life's work. And you guys will have to then take that piece and perfect it. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a kind of like an unfinished stone. Okay. That we cut off some pieces. Floyd cut off some pieces. Sherry cut off some pieces. And then what you guys are going to have to do is come along and cut off some more pieces too. Cause then at some point in time, you guys are going to reveal it's true form. Right. All right. So, but we can't get there by ourselves and we're giving you what we have. And so as we do things like this, you guys have to go out there and research and say, you know what? The wolf was right, but this is how you can make it a little bit better. Sherry had the perfect thing. But he, if we do it like this though, we're going to yield more results. And Floyd, Floyd was right on the money, but let's do it bigger. Okay. That's how we starve the beast. That's how we push it back into its sandbox. And yeah, sure, they can stay here and, and, and do business. We just have to make sure that they respect the Constitution. And yet, and yet, we can't fault them 100% on where we're at, even though, well, we know what it is. But let's just play it by business terms. We never questioned anything our parents gave us. <laughs> Our parents never question anything that their parents gave them, and so on and so forth. Right. So if you don't see, this was the problem before my mom passed. God rest her soul. She's like, you question everything. She's like, you you analyze everything, boy. She's like, and one day, like this is when I was younger, I grabbed the milk and I opened it. And I was like, okay. She's like, you gotta smell the milk too. <laughs> I'm like, how can you drink milk without smelling it? I gotta analyze that. I don't, you know, I don't want, you know. And she's like, oh, you're just too much. <laughs> But then when I got older and she's seen that me questioning every single thing yielded these results. For me, the passport process was one of the things that got me into this because I didn't understand on the old DS-11 form, number 11, it used to say, are you a U.S. citizen or a state citizen? Well, what the hell is a state citizen? Right. What do you mean I can choose? Right. I can, And now I can look at it and go, okay, in this globe, the public hemisphere, okay, the jural or uh, juridical person is the 14th Amendment U.S. citizen. Mm -hmm. That's squarely in their jurisdiction and authorized to be there and to be used for those things. But you have to know how to use that vessel. On the private side is the state, and the bottom of the hemisphere is the state citizen, protected by the Constitution for the United States, uh, Constitution of the United States of America. Okay, and and it's not even that the Constitution is there to limit us, but to limit the corporations and what the government can do. And they're always supposed to be there for us. And some of that's got a little skewed. But did it really? What they're saying is, is if you're wearing our shirt, then these apply to you. If you're wearing our public jumpsuit, <laughs> then you are our federalized employee. And you know what? I can't... Render on the Caesars. What is Caesars? Right, right. right. Well, have you, have you, have you, you've heard of Jordan Maxwell, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I was on a, I was in the Mediterranean Sea with him, um, having a, a great seminar and learning about the bar and all these other things that are just incredible. And I, you know, I commend you guys for teaching this information and although it could be a little overwhelming at times you, know, you break it down in that uh, edutainment way and, and <laughs> make sure that people understand that this was all by design. They, they, they set you up 
every time every time I feel like I've, I've gotten set up, for example, on Netflix, there is a documentary called The Social Dilemma. And that's why I learned that when I research something online, it's going to send me information based on a profile that's set up. So my friend will see something totally different. We could look up the same thing. And because she's more maybe liberal leaning, she's going to see a totally different set of information than I see. And it's going to, you know, rub me a certain way. And that information is going to rub her a certain way. So we, we're being set up, but exposing the setup is, is, is liberating because that's where freedom comes. First of all, you have to expose it. Then your people have to decide whether they're going to go back and hide in the matrix or they're gonna come out. So you've got 700 or so people out here have decided I'm coming out and I'm gonna do something about it. So that's excellent, excellent. Um, are, are the IRS and the Internal Revenue Service separate entities? No, but the Department of Treasury and the Treasury Department are two separate entities, for sure. Isn't um, it the, uh, maybe what they're really trying to say is, is the Internal Revenue Bureau, because isn't the Bureau oh, that's Federal? Different. Yes, that's yeah. different. The Bureau is whole, different. Uh, some, people and, some people that I was working with before I got locked up put, put a whole package together to show the differences and, and how they do them and how when you go into certain websites on the government, it won't even let you use lowercase letters. You can't even use lowercase letters. I had a, a, a friend that got an insurance policy and when it came in, it had his letter, his name in all caps. And when he sent it back, he had scratched out the, the all caps on the insurance and put upper and lowercase and then he signed it and then they immediately canceled the policy. Because all of those uh, benefits and privileges are for the 14th Amendment U.S. citizen. Right. I had this explained to me by one of their <clears throat> agents is that everything that they provide us and do, we can do for ourselves. And they're already in existence. We don't know how to use them or access them. Right. right. So they, what you're getting, because they are the trustees, they're giving it to us as beneficiaries. Here's here's what the uh, the trust has for you, but in order for us to do this, in order for us to get paid, we have to give it to you as one of our prop pieces of property. You know, the the child, the beneficiary. If you are this private person, then you need to know how to set these things up between the government and you directly on your own. But see, a lot of people, what they want is they want the, the handout. They want them to do it for them. And then you've got the people who want to do it for themselves in commerce, but don't know how to do it. Right. So it's a perfect storm. And then you got somebody like us and we, we, we go, oh, I think I know how to do this. And then they go, nope, that's not how you do it. And here's your penalty for that. Because then that makes them money to go, oh, we, just, we had to penalize so-and-so. It was getting a little rowdy over here. You know, Floyd, Floyd was getting a little jazzy, you know, so it's a web where if you're in the public, as they said in the matrix, they're holding all, they are holding all the keys. They're holding the, you know, all the doors are locked, all the windows are pulled. Um, and they are the agents, you know, if you're not one of us, you're one of them. Yeah. I mean, no one slave can serve two masters. So either you're in the public or you're the private, you're never going, you should never try to mix them the same because by lowest common denominator and not to be gross, but I, I do love this expression. Um, I call it my poo cake theory. Okay. 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 So the, the poo cake theory is if you make a cake, whatever your favorite cake is, grandmama's favorite uh, chocolate cake, German chocolate cake, yellow cake, whatever it is. But you take some dog poo and you put it in there. Doesn't matter if it's a small piece or a big piece. The whole cake is poo, right? No one's going to want to eat the cake. That's what it's like dealing with the public straw man. If you got a little in you, the cop or whoever's not going to go, ah, he's just a little bit of a citizen. Go ahead. Bought your day. Nope. You got a little poo in you. It's all poo. Come on. Let's go. Wrap it up. But if you're all good with it, I know it's horrible, but it's true. <laughs> that was a bad pun. 
right. right. <laughs> but that's the truth of this. And that's why I get people to understand that if you want to have a private side, one of the first things you have to do, other than first of all, understand that this is what's really going on. Mm-hmm. And at that point in time, mentally, you are made free. But from there, you have to create and develop your private side. You have to use or create your given name. Okay, because I always tell people that if you're born in North America, you are a Native American. You are native to America or the Americas. Okay, so you should have a Native American type name. So I would be James Charles of the Lovett family or the Lovett tribe, the tribe of Lovett, the house of Lovett, whatever it is. That's something that's not registered to the state or to the GOV. Okay, that's your private side. If you're expecting to have different results by using your your uh, legal name and trying to bring it into the private, they're going to have a problem with that. Mm-hmm. Because hey. you're trying to take away something that's theirs. Our parents gave it to them. We did the same thing to our kids. Here you go, state. <laughs> okay. We'll take care of them. Thank you for making this child a ward of, of ours. We'll take care of them. And then and they know we're incompetent because we've never told them that we were competent to handle our own affairs. Right. That there's the birth certificate. The the one of the major ways that they make sure that we don't learn how to operate in commerce is to keep us busy and understand that the way our system works and the jobs and all of the you know one of the things that we might not understand that's a big factor in us not learning what we need to learn is the entertainment you know you you play you you pay a football player millions of dollars but you pay a teacher fifty thousand dollars a year that's all by design so we don't we don't take the time or we're just too exhausted to learn these remedies and the for the people that have that energy to do that like you all that's great and for your listeners there are a lot of people that i talk to that are you know my age or even 10 years younger it's like i totally understand but i'm just not up for the fight so i'm gonna you know i'm just gonna go mosey over here and do a little bit here somebody says if and i think it's for me if i understand you correctly you're still paying taxes but starving the and i call it the beast Mm -hmm. Uh, um i file tax returns i that take every deduction i Sometimes I have I have been able to get people's if you have if if someone has seventy seven thousand dollars in quote unquote income that can get down to sixteen hundred. It's just depending on how you do that. If 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 people decide to stay within the system, because when you come out of the system, you got to do it right. Like James is talking about, if you come out and you know there's something that you've done, like if, if you still if you still have a job, if you're getting a W-2 you're going to be hard pressed to to call yourself anything because it doesn't matter to them what you call yourself. You've got a W-2 and they're expecting a tax return. Same thing with any of these forms. Same thing with the 1099, the K-1. If you're receiving these forms, if you're out there, you know, you got a, a, a mortgage or you're renting or you got car notes and all that, somehow you got to be paying that unless you're a trust baby and getting money from somewhere else. But if you're getting these forms at the end of the year, they are already keyed in on you expecting a tax return. So what are you going to do? It doesn't matter what you call yourself. You can call yourself the Tasmanian devil, whatever. They're going to be expecting a tax return. So you have to figure out how you're going to handle that. You definitely need to have a, should you elect to a uh, non-taxable entity and utilize that for your uh, purposes, it's an avenue. It's an arm. Just like nobody wants to take cut off their arm, you can just not use it. Which this would be your social security. You know your your uh, IRS number, your social. Okay. Every time you go to do some work with it, you have a contract in place. Yes. If you don't want if you don't want that, then you got to go to your HR department uh, and let show them that you have a new a different arm to use, which is tax exempt. Okay. So you have to go and get the appropriate tax exempt entity and operate commerce properly. That's it. If there, you know, you can't use that which is taxable for non-taxable purposes. I mean, there's there's ways you can modify some things and whatever else, but directly you let the baby have the bottle. Okay. Just get a get the appropriate arm number entity and utilize it that way. I mean. 
you can open up a, a, a tax exempt um, faith based organization with your same name. And now you're operating that aspect as a not as uh, tax exempt. It's, it's not rocket science. It sounds crazy because we're not taught to think and use these things, but these are legitimate, legal and lawful ways of operating in commerce. OK, but you can't. It, what is it? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting different results. Exactly. And, and to reiterate what you said, you have to understand what you're doing. You cannot right. you cannot depend on James or Floyd or anybody else. Mm -hmm. What they said, if you don't understand what you're doing, like the guy <laughs> that talked to the judge and, and, and didn't know what without prejudice meant, it's like. He almost had it, but he did not research. And if he would have been able to explain what without prejudice meant, he would have been OK. So I think we've gotten we've gotten lazy because we're too busy. But if you're going to if you're going to learn how to properly operate, know what what every I means, what every T means, everything, dot all I's, cross all T, know what these things mean, study it. Write it down and study it so that you can understand and be able to properly explain yourself to these people that don't want you to succeed. So somebody had mentioned, is that a 501c3? No, you want a 508c1a. Yeah, like I said, I've, I've made other videos on all the uh, unincorporated association, private trust, foreign trust, uh, you know, any of those, but uh, I mean, if you want a 501 C3, yeah, um, by all means, get it. But you're going to find that there's more freedom in the 508 versus the 501, you know, but there are numerous other types of entities that are not taxable. Yeah, we've we've made videos on that. And let's see here. All right. Floyd or uh, Sherry, any more jazz for the peoples? Are we about ready to wrap her? I was looking to see if there were any more questions. You can go ahead, Floyd. Um, what do you know about trade acceptances? That's not one of the air. I don't know. You okay. know, and I don't claim to know anything that I just don't. Yeah, that's a that's the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, one of the people asked, and you may not know this because we already kind of addressed this, but they're asking about the W eight B E N. Do you know that one? It's the uh, tax yes. exempt. When you, when you, uh, like when they're asking you for information, now they want you to fill out the W 9. But what you're talking about instead is filling out the W 8. Yeah. I know that people have done that. I don't know, you know, about their success or lack thereof when they do that. <laughs> the, the two leading forms right now that were conveyed to me um, for people to claim a tax exemption. Um, <laughs> is the W eight B N and the W four V. Okay. Those okay. are the two, the two reigning forms. Um, from what I've heard and, um, it's been a very high success rate with those okay. when filled out properly. Okay. Um, if people do not, then they might have different results, but when done properly, those are the two forms. Um, in speaking with people with the agency that are can you can handle your tax scenarios if the forms fit you and also along with that and we, we touched on it but i want to say it in a different way when you're presenting forms not necessarily to the government but certain forms that you're presenting to a company that has you working for them you have to, they don't, if they don't understand what you're doing and you can't understand it, then it's going to cause problems. I've had people that call me that basically got fired from the, the job that they were working for because they were adamant about what they were doing, but either they couldn't explain it or they explained it and the company was too afraid to deal with them. So we have to be careful about that. I, I know of several people that lost their jobs, but, but understanding so you can explain to the legal department or explain to the HR department what these forms are so that you can use that other arm. Uh, I've, mm -hmm. I've had, you know, even banks that accepted the information when people were trying to uh, open up bank accounts because they were able to explain to the banker what was going on. I see something that says, 
crypto unrealized gains must be reported crazy these people are crazy they want you to report gains on crypto that you have not cashed in they do not want us to succeed people you have to realize that so operating in private is a definite in these days as much as possible they're they're trying to crash crypto and make us go to this central bank digital currency in the first place but for us to have crypto and and have realized gains on it but the unrealized gains means that you you're let's say if you have crypto you have crypto and it was worth a thousand now it's worth ten thousand but you still have it in there you hadn't gotten it out they don't they don't make you report that money on stocks and bonds. Right. Why are they trying to make you report the, the money where your crypto is still in there? Why are you why are they doing that? Because they don't want you to succeed. So as as hard as they fight us to make us fail, we have to fight harder to succeed. That means I'm gonna give your people an assignment. Is that okay? Sounds good to me. Okay. This, this is the end of the month. Starting on March first. From March first all the way through April 30th, turn off the television. No sports, no soap operas or whatever the heck they have on there these days, none of that. Turn off the television. If you must have some entertainment, let it be what we're doing with is edutainment, watching James, watching other people, learning how to, uh, the, the importance of buying silver and gold. There's this woman that I just started watching named Lynette Zhang, Mm -hmm. Z-A-N-G. And she's she's a handful. You you familiar with her, Floyd? Yes, oh, definitely. my goodness. I mean, you know, the things that we can learn when we pay attention and focus on the things that are going to help us. So don't turn on the television starting March 1st, March, all of March and all of April. Keep the television off. You'll 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 get an education. Definitely. And if you got kids, if you have small children, don't let them watch that foolishness on there. Find something for them to watch. I let my granddaughter watch maybe the, the the animal shows about animals and how, you know, some animals are in the forest and some are in the jungle and all that stuff like that. She doesn't watch that foolishness. That stuff stops now. That generation of stuff stops now. As What's far as schooling is concerned, my children are grown now. They're 32 and 30. They never graced the halls of a government school because I knew when I was about 15 years old, that that was not going to happen. And I had to, you know, hustle and make enough money to have them in private school. And then after the IRS came and they went to my kids' private school and started asking questions about me and the school got scared and put them out after five years. And so we did homeschool after that. And that was the best decision because they are well-rounded. Both of them are homeowners and they don't, they don't deal with all this foolishness. They couldn't tell you who won the Super Bowl. I don't even know. I think maybe the Chiefs were in there just because it's fresh and I heard people talking about it. But until uh, Tom Brady starts stroking me a check, my team is the Jackson team. We got we, we got to get it together, y'all. Um, so to answer this person's question, um, well, that's a long conversation um, that I – may or may not have all of the answers for, but I will say this, everything that's done is, has a, a fee attached to it. So you have to find a way to pay off that fee. It's either gonna be financial, financial or physical. Um, and then I've seen somebody said, what about the revocation of election? I don't know if you've heard of that, uh, Sherry, revocation of election. No. So, so the uh, revocation of election is where you're informing the IRS of your status and you're letting them know that you are um, no longer a taxpayer because you're operating privately. So one of the things I can tell you guys about that um, is that the way they want you to do this is that you need to fill out the proper forms and create the proper entity to no longer be taxable and that's how you do the revocation they don't want to be sent the forms anymore they uh, never really like them and if you continue to bother them they will consider it uh, paper terrorism which is crap in its own but they look at it as well you're in impairing our ability to um uh work operate business we'll say i had some other interesting words but we'll just say to operate business so 
you don't need to send anything in for a revocation of election. But what you do is you merely stop using your social, you switch up with the places that are using that, and you get a correct entity to now do your business in commerce instead of the taxable. You create a non-taxable one. That's the secret behind the revocation of election. Okay. Is the United States a foreign corporation because of the District of Columbia? Yes. The IRS, an IRS agent told me that anybody rats on anybody, they always audit you first before they go after the person you reported. No, especially if, if you got juicy information on that person, they're going to, they're not going to go after you. They're going to go after that person. I don't know if there's, uh, um, a6 says you do not have to have a social, do they? I think it's trying to say, do you have to have a social? No. No. I, I would I would say no, but no. it's hard to operate within the system without one. I, I, when I found out all this information, like I said before, is I sent those cards back, my children's cards yeah. that they were given, I sent them back and they operated for years without that slave surveillance number. And when I got put away, uh, they would not let my daughter, and this is you know something I had no control over, she ended up having to pull that number back out for some reason. And, and when mm -hmm. my son was applying for college, he didn't need it, but I think at some point or another that number came back up where it, it became very difficult. I'm not saying impossible, but difficult to operate with. It's difficult to operate within the system. Uh, if you don't have the fortitude to stand up and do all this work that James and, and Floyd are doing, but it looks like a lot of you guys do have the fortitude to, to do this. This this group of people are very dynamic. They definitely keyed into me and have supported and they get it. Um, one of the things I know a lot of ladies have come to me and asked me uh, how to have, you know, their child without, you know, a birth certificate or social or whatever else. And the whole thing, once again, you guys have the, the, um, you have the merit, you have the, you have, you got the tool, get your child an EIN. That's a, the, the same thing between having a social and a legal name is a business EIN that's tax exempt. And also get a doula and have the baby at home. There you go. Yep, definitely. When yeah. they're in the hospital, some of the hospitals are automatically, if that baby pops out in the hospital, they're automatically shoving a uh, a number on on you with that uh -huh. because they know that people don't want that number. Right. So uh, one of the things, so Sean, I don't know if this is a question for you. I know somebody else had mentioned if you knew anything about tax credits, but he goes, "What are the tactical steps to getting to the CP five seven five unlimited?" credits process. I think I know what he's talking about, but I've never heard any anybody accomplishing that. Mm, no, I'm not familiar with that either. It's it's hard to remember a lot of numbers. I'm more I'm more into whatever the title of the form is than the number because I had to remember so many form numbers. When you establish an EIN, you automatically receive a CP575 form back from the IRS stating your your entity name with your EIN number. Okay. That's okay. That's that form. Is. Okay. When they assigned you, when they assigned you the EIN. Right. Yes. Okay. That's what that form is. Okay. Yeah. Alrighty. Great. So, so uh, ASICS, uh, his, he, he, what he meant to say was, no, I said, you do not have a social because it's not yours. It literally right. says that yeah. on the card that it is right. in fact their property. Right. And I sure did send it back to him too. <laughs> And uh, mm -hmm. I wrote them a letter and I said, you know, I'm sending these back, you know, uh, do the, you know, why are you sending these out? And they said, well, you don't have to have a social security number, but, and it's not, it's not something that uh, it isn't a law, but it's become a custom for, right. for companies to use it is what they told me that that came straight from the social security. And, and it was never meant to be used the way they're using it. Not, it was not, but it was so convenient for it, them to slide it in right there. That's another one of those things that they do to us. Yeah. They're always looking for the new angle, you know, at the round, you know, all the way around. <laughs> right, right. So somebody said if you have a W-2 job, you need to file taxes under SSN. Not necessarily if you if you've done the right paperwork and you've gotten yourself out of that W-2 system. 
I mean, the whole thing, guys, is, I mean, just just take two seconds to understand that you've got the tools. You know, we can we can show you. All right. Well, we can we can provide you with the tools. What you do with them is up to you. All right. But if we're telling you that if you want to change your tax uh, scenario or the size of what you're, you know, how you're being taxed, you got to use something different. You know, you, you can reduce your own taxes to a certain degree, but if you want to move different, you got to think and act different. So you got to use another whole. I know people with 10, 15 uh, EINs, all different for different things. You know what I mean? Some have them so that they can mature them, build credit and sell them. Some they use uh, for foreign stuff. Some are foreign. Uh, some these for personal. You know, you have to figure out how you want to move and then you do it. But if you're trying to and how do they say it from their own words? Um, it is uh, if they're going to call it tax evasion, it's called tax avoidance. All right. So you have to use tax avoidance, which is Legal. getting a tax exempt number and entity. Mm -hmm. That's it. If the car you're driving is a is a ghetto cruiser jalopy, <laughs> uh, north, or we call it a north a north side banger. You know, you don't miss no uh, potholes. You don't care if you park in the front and get your. That's your U.S. citizen taking all the abuse raggedy. Okay, the ragalack. All right, then you got to get something a little nicer. And in this case, I'm sorry. What does it cost to get a EIN? Nothing. Right. They're just telling you you need to you if if you don't like the who ride, get a different one. Right, right. Put it in your given name. If if James C. Lovett is a taxable Fourteenth Amendment entity, that there's nearly almost not too much I can do to change that. Uh, then guess what? James Charles of the Lovett family is going to be a tax exempt five hundred eight C one A or unincorporated association, private trust, foreign trust. Or whatever else other options are out there, and there are tons. You can literally call them. Hey, what are all the tax exempt uh, entities that are that you guys have? Or do your own research. But right. don't be don't be afraid to call them. They, that's what they have the number for. They're getting paid, you know, by with our money to wait for your call. And you're not calling them. You guys sitting there scared. Right. Better yet, get a, get it in writing. That helps. Mm. Somebody says, Sherry, are you taking on new clients? Yes, I have several. Of consulting packages they go all the way from an hour consultation all the way up to a year or two so I, I am doing that you can get in touch with me or go to my website wake What's the that website again wake the people.com wake the people.com is the website or just go to uh, my email sherry peel jackson at gmail.com if the banks um, are lending out your deposits by fractional reserve banking can you not file tax forms with your bank since they are making? Okay. So I learned something from Catherine Austin Fitz. She's another one. She has a newsletter called Solari. You, you familiar with her too also, Floyd? Okay. Mm -hmm. She talked about a, a, a procedure that her lawyer used where some somebody said she owed them $14,000 and it was a governmental agency. And so she said, since the government has, uh, you know, been squandering our money and they've lost at least fourteen thousand dollars a person. They need to call it even, and they <laughs> did it. And there's a name for it, but um, I wish I had it in front of me right now. But there are definitely remedies out there. So the government, it, we're paying over sixty-four thousand dollars. We, we're in debt over sixty-four thousand dollars a person in this country, based on the the national debt being over thirty-one trillion dollars. So, and and there's you know millions of million millions of dollars that are missing when they have the government audit. So if they're saying that I owe money, but you owe me money back, so we gotta call it even. There's a name for that. And that's another remedy that I just found out about when I watched Catherine maybe last week. See this excellent information on you know the internet on YouTube. And so I'll be looking more into that just in case. Uh, they don't, they're not saying that I owe anything at this point, but anybody that says I owe anything, I'm gonna find a way to say, well, you owe me that back. All right. Stress. <laughs> <laughs>
this thing runs fast, doesn't it? I I am um, uh, gotta be a speed reader. Yeah. Yeah, I'm and then and then the question marks. And then it'll jump. <laughs> I saw that happen twice. It did jump. It really did, and it just did it again. So. Yeah, I just am. all you can do is just grab what you can get. Um, right. That's what I try to tell people. We still have 635 people here towards the end of the hour, and it's just so many. Mm -hmm. I I by myself get about 200 emails, uh, you know, a day. I do too. I do and too. I I try to answer a lot. So once again, thank you for you know finding mine in there because you know mm -hmm. it's it's a it's a yeah you know just and we're we're trying to give you guys what we can. Um, cause like I said, you guys are gonna have to be the ones to carry the torch, right? You know, I ain't trying to be 800 years old and all right, yeah, you know, <laughs> nope. nope. I right. want to be, I want to be sitting with uh with uh Floyd and Sherry somewhere and 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 my loved ones on some island somewhere. Yeah, Costa Rica, Costa Rica, and, and being like, ah, you guys see, they're doing it. They're finally yes. getting it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yes, because yeah. when 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 we cross over, mm -hmm. and we're gonna, James and I are gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell y'all when, but uh, yeah, all the pieces are in place, so it's just mm -hmm. uh, it's a time now. Mm -hmm. uh, and when it happens, you know, some things get sealed forever. We will uh, share. Well, after we're done here in a couple, uh, probably like said, maybe another 10 or 15 minutes. I know I said it 10, 15 minutes ago, but we'll give it another 10 or 15. Yeah. And we'll wrap it. So after we close, stay after, uh, Sherry, we'll, we'll privy you to a couple of things in the uh, in the privet. Okay. Um, but uh, otherwise, yeah, um, it, it's we, we can't do this forever. You guys have to pick up the torch and start learning this. And like I said. When I started seeing like the one video, the first one I seen um, was a young lady of color. And she literally was like, did you know that this is uh, unconstitutional and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And she's like under code, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, <laughs> like she, barely, she looked like she couldn't even get into the bar, you know, I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> Great. The, the bar, I mean, the drinking bar. Uh, and I'm like, that is fire. I was like, OK, OK. And then, you know, I've got some people who are like, yeah, you know, you guys are making a difference out there. We're, we're making a difference for those people out there who want this and who are looking for this. We are not actively against the GOV or anybody, any anything whatsoever. They're doing business. We respect that. And all we're going to do is we're going to make them respect us living in the private and with our constitutional right to not contract. But if we choose to do business, we now know how to do it the appropriate way which I would like to think that's what they want us to do at the end of the day is to do it the right way. Right. So somebody is asking where, what other places do I recommend to live? Now that's personal. Um, that's a personal question for you because you might want to go to Europe. You might be looking at, I'm, I'm looking, there's a, there's a, a way that I've selected and it's like, is the government stable? It, uh, you know, what is their, um, I don't I didn't want to go to a place where their number one source of income was tourism because the United States is a big bully and they could go in and say, if you don't tell everybody, you know, if everybody's bank account, then we're going to make sure that somebody dies, you know, once a day in your country and we're going to mess up your tourism or whatever. So I, I, you need a stable government. They need some, um, you know, some type of way for you to sustain yourself. I was at a, I, we used to have these international conferences like every six months. That's why, that's how I met Catherine Austin Fist. I've been, you know, spoken, you know, on, on the same stage with her, uh, with uh, Jordan Maxwell, a lot of other people. We used to go offshore to talk about stuff that, you know, nobody, nobody needed to know about. And Catherine Austin Fist was asked the same question about where people should live. And her and some, her and another guy is this passed on right now. Ted, his name is Ted Gunderson. They were talking about it. It's like, okay, well, for people of color, you might not want to select any place in Europe because they might be looking at you like you don't belong here. And, you know, you might want to look at Central or South America or they're different. They're different reasons. I would, I, my selection was based on the fact that I could live off the grid really easily. 
Um, and then you can live very inexpensively down in, in South and Central America. But you just need to research and, and figure that out. I, I've talked to a guy today about seven o'clock and he said that he, he had selected to go to Africa, uh, specifically Nigeria. Well, you know, he's he's already vested over there. I, I looked over there, too. But if I was looking at um, Namibia, then I looked at Liberia. They only got 90 doctors in the whole country. No. <laughs> no, so it just depends on, you know, it depends on you and your preferences to where you want to live. I said, I got two more years before I want to retire. And, you know, I'm working vigorously to make sure that I'm I'm going to be able to sustain myself there in Costa Rica with, you know, online or even if not, I'll have food because there's plenty of food. The mangoes, they are just <laughs> out of this world. And, uh, you know, the food is nutri nutrient dense. I'm looking for any other question mark, question marks on here. Um, I know like one of the things for me is um, like inside the house, you know, I've got lots of plants. Um, matter of fact, my living room is pretty much not a living room. It's a plant room. Okay. Uh, and so, you know, if I get seeds from whatever else, when I eat something, which is one of the reasons why we'll just say it's in such a coincidence that a lot of foods are going without seeds. Mm -hmm. Um, but when I get them, I will plant them and be able to have them, you know, things to eat in the house, onions and whatever else you can regrow from the roots and whatever yes. outside. I've got a, um, a peach tree, uh, raspberry bushes, grapevine, um, had a, a plum tree and then, you know, I got a mini garden, okay. you know, you know, so these are the things that like, they don't see. A lot of people don't understand is that what they're doing is they are a service oriented corporate foreign corporation and they want you to eat fast food that has and regular processed food that has way too much salt for the for the human body at least for people of color especially and they want you to not go outside and get sun they don't want you to put your feet on the ground so that your body can ground Exactly. You know, uh, your deodorants have aluminum in them um, and a lot of these other things that when they're mixed are also not good for you, you know. And then every day everybody's sitting here going to sleep with their phone, you know, and, you know, like turn it off, you know, put it, you know, or have sun guide or something else that can absorb that. Put your phone across the room or at least put it within arm's distance. So that's not right up underneath you, right. you right. know, right. Um, but if you elect to live that way, it's your choice. We're not telling you what to do by any means. We're just letting you know that there are there might be some potential concerns with, you know, certain things. Do your own research. Like I said, these are all our experiences. You may have a different, you know, uh, experience with said things. And there's, it's not know, a different experience. It's just, you know, whether they have the knowledge or not. It's like. Right. These things are killing us. These the 5G and all that's killing us. I, I wear a bonnet, not a, you know, I don't wear it out in public, but to bed because my hair is natural. But my bonnet shields. If I was to stick my phone in the bonnet and you called it, it wouldn't ring. Right. My head is protected. I have a couple of these energy batteries. All these things are things that I learned by paying attention to other people you know, in conferences or on the internet rather than watching television. I have an aerial garden. I don't know if you know what that is, but it, you, I put water and food in it and my salad comes up every two days in my kitchen. I have a, a two apple trees, a fig tree, a pomegranate tree, a pecan tree, uh, eight blackberry bushes, two blueberry bushes, and a whole bunch of oregano and uh rosemary and a peach tree just like you i have all of that and i just planted literally yesterday 50 plants some of them cabbage some of them broccoli some of it kale and some lemons from my lemon and lime tree so there's there's in while i'm here on on in plan a i'm trying to prepare but i'm really trying to prepare for plan b and mm -hmm. we need to make sure that you know the things that we're doing are helping our our families uh, be sustainable. I'm not going to tell you everything I'm doing. I'm doing a whole bunch of stuff to make sure that my family is sustained. I'm, I have my parents will be 80 and 79 next month. And I'm an only child. So I definitely have to make sure that everything's okay. 
How can you get a private P.O. box without identification, staying completely private? Well, the way I did that was I hired somebody. My person went and got the box and they gave me the key and then I fired them. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had a key to my private box. I mean, there's a way to do just about everything. <laughs> Enter entertainment purposes only. Yes, for entertainment <laughs> purposes only. That was a that I, was a joke. That was a funny joke. <laughs> I, I would I would suggest uh, creating a trust <laughs> and appointing somebody if you if you decide or guess or getting a virtual one, um, and have it redirected to. I mean, you you know, yeah. It's, it, there's lots of virtual boxes you can get out there whether they're in this country or a service provided in another country to this country. There's lots of ways to move into private. Matter of fact, there's tons of books that you can get that are titled on Amazon, how to live in the private or how to be invisible or anonymous. If that's what you choose, mm -hmm. it's all in the books. There's somebody, everything that you want to accomplish, somebody out there has done it. And all you need to do is get their book. Right. How do we yeah. protect our, uh, protect ourselves from the coming crypto USD replacement when they want to disable our digital dollars when we buy what they don't think we should buy. Uh, I'm, I'm not patronizing any business right now that doesn't take cash. I try to pay everything in cash. So when I get checks, I go and cash them. And also, uh, we, we don't, let's not forget about bartering and buying silver and gold and then bartering. Start trying to get together with like-minded people in your area and start making plans. If they're not your family members, if they're your family members, fine. If they're not, you know, maybe start forming some groups, find out who's where and start getting together because I can guarantee you that the wealthy people, they have their compounds. Taya Turner has this gigantic compound in Montana and so on and so on. And so we have to, we have to get to the point where we know, that there are certain people that, that are like-minded and that we're going to be working with them and maybe bartering with them. I might have something that you need and vice versa. That's another one of the reasons why we're doing this master plan community in Costa Rica, because it'll be a bunch of like-minded people. And, you know, those of us that are together are going to be stronger. I know, I don't know, have you ever, have you guys ever talked about this series that was on Netflix called Revolution? where the, the grid went out. It, it, it started 15 years after the grid went out and it was so powerful. Oh, and it wow. was like, I like sci-fi because they really tell you kind of what's going on. Mm -hmm. But the people that survived were the ones who stuck together in groups. Um, so, you know, protecting ourselves from crypto means taking a stand against these the cashless society right now. We can do that by using cash. Convenience kills sometimes people. Yes, indeed. Well, remember, they everything that they do is for profit and it's a service. So the more services, the more times they can get you to repeat, you know, uh, you know, to be a repeat uh, offender uh, clients, you know, uh, then that makes more money generated for them. You know, so yeah. the better, the, the, the more healthy you can stay. Like I always tell people, you know, obviously consult your doctor before doing anything or listening to anything. But you know, I probably take about eight vitamins a day, anywhere between the minimum of six to maybe, maybe nine, 10, depending on the level that they are, um, especially a one a day, you know, because uh, most of the food and things we eat and whatever else do not have, from my, my perspective, enough of the nutrients, supplements, trace elements, you know, whatever in them. We're eating hollow food and then we're covering ourselves with synthetics and whatever else. And that's not natural. We didn't have half these problems in our parents' generations and then from there back. And one of the things that somebody brought up to me, and I didn't think about this, and I, I know you guys can relate. Some of these younger, younger Thundercats out here probably cannot. But I am old enough to remember that when we went on a cross-country trip, a family, love it family extravaganza. There were so many bugs that hit our windshield <laughs> that we would only be able to go a couple of miles and to pull over to the rest stop where we'd meet other people cleaning their, their windshields. Mm -hmm. Now that might seem small and not and insignificant, but remember 
we live in a in a web and if the smallest things on that chain are the bugs and you guys understand i mean you guys do they don't your whole windshield will be bug guts and wings and all kind of stuff and it was horrible driving so don't get me wrong it is definitely easier driving these days but what get what the, the, the message there is if we have killed off so many bugs, which is the smallest part of the food chain, by the toxins in the air, the water supply, the uh, the uh, uh, farming. Now, just an observation. But if you're spraying my food and you've got a full-on mask that looks like you retrieve alien bodies, <laughs> do I really want to eat that? Just right. just a thought, you know. So if the bugs are in the smallest part of the food chain and they're the ones who hit the have they experience the ripple first. <laughs> all I'm saying is, is that just pay attention to what's going on. There's always signs. If you throw a rock in the pool, the the ripples, the waves eventually get to where you're standing. That's all I'm saying. Yes. So, Yes, that's that's you, you're telling the truth. I mean, it's like my, my dad even said that when he grew up, everybody in the neighborhood had a garden, everybody. So mm -hmm. um, we, we've changed a lot. We're dependent on the system. We are dependent on the corporatocracy. And, and right now, you just got to make a conscious decision to pull away from it every day. Find a way to pull away from the corporatocracy, the banksters, the corporations and the government. Somebody said, Dr. CB. Yeah. Um, you know, they killed Dr. CB and I, and I'll, I'll say that. Um, uh, but again, there, there are cures out there. The oregano that's in my front and backyard, you know, made me confident not to have to wear a mask during this pandemic and other things being grounded, going outside, vitamin C, ivermectin, ivermectin, ivermectin. <laughs> <laughs> but you say? Yeah, yeah, what did I say? So, you know, uh, my, my my disdain for the way that we've been treated as people, as human beings, grows on a daily basis. Maybe that's because I'm getting older and honorary or whatever. But young people, you all start paying attention to what they're doing. And, and there's a way to buck the system without getting yourself in trouble. I don't want anybody to get in trouble. I would never want anybody to have to experience what I experienced. But you don't have to do that if you do it correctly. So start paying attention. No TV for the month of March and April. You might not even want to go back to it after that. There's a, there's a there's enough good information on the on YouTube. This show here, uh, Floyd has a show. You got Captain Austin Fizz. You've got other people. That guy, what's his name, David Bet something and. And you've got Lynette Zane, all these people trying to give this information that's going to help us uh -huh. and teach your children. If you've got teenagers, if you've got adult children, let them know. My children know, you know that, that we don't play around with that. They don't even watch television. We grew up with music and I grew up literally with, with families getting together with board games. We need to get back to some of the things that we used to do to get fellowship because I don't you know, if you don't know your neighbors, how are you going to help them or they help you? you know, when the wheels come off. Uh -huh. All right. All right. Um, that being said, I think we are pretty much at the end. We're, uh, I think, ready to wrap it up. So, Floyd, we will let you uh, say your last couple of words on, you know, your thoughts and your, your channel um, and anything else. And then we will turn it over to our lovely guest and then I'll finish up and then we'll stay after for a minute or two just to kind of close everything out. And so, so just hang on after I kill the, the broadcast. And that's gonna be it guys for the night. So uh, Floyd, take it away and then uh, we'll go from there. Well, I wanna thank James for uh, inviting me on the show. I wanna check our, thank our guest, Sherry. And I want to thank your audience, James, for being uh, so knowledgeable about a wide range of subjects. Man, uh, that's very. Yeah. Yeah. We've gone all over the place with this. <laughs> 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 you guys can reach me. Uh, I'm the Fearless Floyd Show on across basically every platform you're going to entertain. Fearless Floyd Show at Yahoo.com. Fearless Floyd Show .com is my uh, website. Uh, I'm going to encourage you if you guys don't have a trust set up set up a trust 
and I'm sure Sherry and James will both agree with me, that's one of the first pieces of armor you can put on to protect yourself and your assets and, uh, well, you know, indemnify yourself from liabilities. Um, I believe I've covered everything I need to cover. Um, oh, the public announcement that I was supposed to make on Friday, I still have not gotten the go word hmm. and I'm waiting on that. Uh, so, uh, hopefully when that, uh, comes to fruition, James and I will do a live broadcast together and uh, present that information to you guys. And with that, I will digress to our gracious guest, Sherry, go ahead. Okay, it's been fun. You know, I'm a Nighthawk anyway. I think I might have relayed that to you. I'll stay up all night for you, but don't <laughs> wake me up in the morning. I am not a morning person. I'll be up probably till, last night I went down at about 3.30. I just don't like getting up in the morning, but you know, I'm all, I'm all you know, jumpy at night and that's when I get my creative juices. So I really enjoy being here. Um, you know, I have books. I have uh, the the consultation and the packages on IRS and starting a business and all that. You can get in touch with me at SherryPeelJackson at gmail.com or wakethepeople.com. And, uh, you know, I'll be able to help anybody that needs help with the things that I specialize in, which are not the same things as James. He's doing something a little different. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, you younger people, you know, you, you go do that. Go do it and make sure that you stand up for what you believe in. Make sure that you can explain what it is that you believe in. All right. All right. With that being said, um, I want to thank both of our guests for coming on the show. I mean, Floyd's pretty much like a, a co-host at this point in time. He's always popping in um so thank you guys and then also thank you for all the people watching the show um don't worry it will be on my main youtube channel on the live sections so you guys can watch it play it back rewind it and uh further enjoy it so as always guys uh vet all information you guys get take care of yourselves take care of each other continue mm -hmm. to you know, uh, be blessed, first of all, um, and just learn, read. That's the biggest thing. Get the books and start educating yourselves. We can we can provide you with this. OK, you know, but, you know, the, the system isn't worried because nobody wants to learn. They don't have time. And so I know personally for me, I don't watch TV. I haven't even, unless my TV accidentally somehow gets flipped on to the regular TV channel, I am every day on YouTube looking up other interesting things from people who are out there doing real things, making real things happen. And every once in a while, if a good movie comes out, yeah, I'll go see a movie. Treat yourself. Have some fun. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you ask me, you know, about, I don't even know what was the Super Bowl and something happened recently. Uh, I know, uh, was it uh, so-and-so wore red and she was pregnant? That's about all I get because I really don't even, you know. Why? Because what did Caesar say? Okay. Probably, most of you guys probably don't even know because you don't know which Caesar I'm talking about. Not little Caesars. Okay. You know, Caesar over in Rome. What did he say? If you provide the people, the masses with entertainment, you can control them. Are you not entertained? Okay. So you're going to find your entertainment somewhere, okay? But it depends on the quality of the entertainment that you're getting. If you're not feeding your mind with something, you know, deep, spiritual, enlightening, and something that can help you move and elevate, then you're probably partaking in something that's taking away from you or making you feel hollow and depressed and whatever else, which, once again, feeds the beast. There's more than one way to fight like Bruce Lee said, the art of fighting without fighting. So that being said, guys, everybody have a good night. Uh, we will talk to you guys later. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that um, if Sherry's ever so willing, she can come back to the show at any point in time. We, all, we know Floyd will be here. Um, that being said, everybody have a good night. And we will talk to you guys later. Bye.